No, oh, hit that button. You live? And we're live. Welcome to Beers with Bad Company. I am your host, the beer man, fresh back from Ireland. What a fucking time that was. Look, <laughs> if you're a minor, don't drink on YouTube. Pretty sure it's against the law. Everybody else, thumbs up. <laughs> and tonight we have with us on the show um, that dumb fuck sitting with the good lighting that isn't allowed to talk. And my very good friend, Timmy, who doesn't have any lights on, which is great because he's an ugly motherfucker. How's that? Oh. Timmy, what's going on, buddy? What's up, man? How you been? Fantastic. Long time no see. How you been? Great. Uh, I didn't want to come home. Ireland's beautiful. I fucking love it in Ireland, man. Why would anybody ever fucking leave that place? Guns. It doesn't make sense. Guns. You're not allowed having guns. No. That's why I'd leave. Well, we're not allowed having guns here either, so why would I leave? Yes, we are. So listen, I I I learned a lot. I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know when we were in Ireland this last time. Like that was, that's one divided fucking country. Oh yeah. It's sad. Do we got I got I gotta I didn't realize I got I got the boys from Belfast picked me up. And those boys are English. They're, they're British, yeah. Yeah. So I learned a whole they they their side they tell us all tell the same stories, but they tell them with a little different twist. Both, you know, depending who you're talking to. You know, yeah. There's always three sad. versions of every story, you know? It's 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 sad because they're all brothers, they're all Irish, you know. So Yeah, but they're British. Not really British. They're Irish. They're born in Ireland. They're fucking Irish. But it's not Ireland. It's part of the UK. They're British. Well, no, it's Northern part of Ireland. Northern Ireland. 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 It's on the island of Ireland, but that's like saying I'm American because I'm born in North America. Technically, yeah, I'm American, you are. but I'm Canadian. You're not, you're not on the island of America. I'm on North America. It's a fucking continent, not an island. So what? It's still, Great Britain is a fucking island with fucking another island attached to it and four countries in it. True, true. I just, so, I just, I just, I just find it sad because they're all good boys. You know what I mean? They're all Irish. Yeah, they're but you can't tell them that, man. That'll make them hate you. No, well, I shut, the, I shut the fuck up. Government and religion are hell of a drug. Oh yeah. All a bunch of fucking bullshit. Like, why can't we all just get along? I don't get it. People are assholes. Yeah, not me. I'm a great person. The assholes always seek to have power and authority over other people. Yeah, they do. It's just, it's just sad because they're all good people, you know. Even those limey fucks from UK. Well, that would be the Northern Irish. I'm not talking about Northern Ireland. I'm talking about the ones from UK. The ones that live. The Northern the Irish are from the UK. Once, so yeah. we're only about 15 minutes away from that north-south border in Ireland, and know, anybody north of that is from the UK. <sighs> Yeah, Not, I, I, they, they live. In, yes, you're, they live in the U, UK. The UK controls that part of Northern Ireland. Not Ireland. It's still yeah. Ireland. It's, it's still on Ireland. the island of Ireland, but South Southern Ireland is like it's just, know, I, I the Republic just, of it's, Ireland. That's yeah, that's I, the country of Ireland. That's the only real I, Irish technically now. Everybody north is technically British from the UK, oh, and then, like Scotland, Wales, and England, they're all over on that other island. They're all a bunch of greasy yeah. pricks too. Yep. Uh, but, I mean, the Irish from Southern Ireland, they're all cunts. What do you mean? I love them. They're great. Yes, they are. Bunch of fucking cunts, though. Especially that Marcus. Oh, God. Love him, love him if I can understand him. <laughs> well, maybe you only say that because you can't understand him. He, he, I thought I thought, I thought freaking Paul Maiden had a really bad freaking twang. Holy shit. Paul speaks freaking clear to fit him. Yeah. So there's a couple of uh, them Irish that a lot of the Irish are fine to understand. Yeah. And then there's some that just have this, I don't know what the fuck it is, like fucking gypsy accent or something. And you don't understand Mark, a fucking word. Mark, they sound I like think... Go ahead, Tim. No, go ahead, man. I, don't, I'm I was going to say they sound like uh, somebody's trying to get their lucky charms. 
<laughs> oh God, he's bad. So it, like I said, it, it, I always thought Paul was bad. My God, Mark is a great dude. I mean, probably one of one of the better, the best. I don't know, host promoter. What what is he? Is he considered the promoter? Or is Paul the promoter? Well, I mean, they're partners on it, right? All right so they're both promoters. Well, probably one of the best. Listen, I love Igor. Igor's treated me like like gold. The new from the new promotions, those Paul and, and Marcus have it by far. Well, Paul's a fucking twat. Just an ignorant prick. Paul? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Anybody I love Marcus, Marcus, but man, he's a fucking cut too. He threatens to fucking murder me like every time we talk. Dude, I heard he was like twirling somebody over his head one time. He doesn't smoke, right. he doesn't look he, he, I heard he's like like uh uh British uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black judo. Right? judo, okay. Yeah but he's like competition. I think he was an Irish champ. I think he competed for the UK in the Commonwealth Games in judo, and he was a heavyweight champion kickboxer as well. Yes, yeah. I mean, I, I feel yeah. really. I hear about kickboxing. Yeah, but he punches like a girl. So most of the Canadians. Well, yeah. especially Devin, does. The, Devin can't shoot. He can't punch. I didn't hear about that. I know Did you, you watch know. him fight Thor? I wouldn't want to get near him either. Yeah, but did you see the punches he was throwing? Devin's elbows don't work with a shit. He can't turn over. He can't throw a punch. It's, but he had the balls to go and try it. Hey, yeah, that was boxing. Tip the hat to that. Uh, he wrote, I mean, like Devin's more of a fucking, he, he's more of jujitsu too. He's not. Yep. I, I've seen him roll. I've seen him roll with top notch dudes. He, he no who the fuck with. Well, he was the big judo guy back in the day too. Devin. Yeah. Yeah. See, the thing about it is, we're back in the day. I just fuck with guys like that. Like that. You're an arm broker. Just shoot him. Done. All over. So I missed most of what you were saying when you're playing with your earpiece. It just cut all out on me. I don't know if it was just me or if Roy got it. No, I, no, it cut out. Okay. When you, you know when you're it cuts out when you're touching it. Okay. Your oh, mine gets, gets hard when I touch it. <laughs> Especially when I'm looking at the, the at the beer man. He's such a sexy motherfucker, you know. Well, can't blame me <laughs> for that one. I don't know, dude. I just I don't know. Those boys, those, like I said, I like being in the states. That way, if I get somebody that's that much badder ass than I am, I just shoot them. No big deal, you know. Well, that's because you're not doing it for sport. What sport? Never a sporting shooting? It's not sport. a people. I, I yeah, mean, they they, sporting didn't they do people, that shit on like Epstein's Island and shit too? People, people are better because they move. They're like targets. They move. <laughs> that's when you pull out the shotgun so you ain't got to aim so well. You just point. <laughs> just point in. And the buckshot just flails right out. But. Ah. We've only ever done it with birdshot, I guess we're just or with uh, rock salt loads. We're just pussies, I guess. We thought we come close when I was a kid to getting rocked. We 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 were walking back from the fucking the wall, me, two other guys, three other guys, and there's this big ass bull in a in a in a in a pen. We decided to take a big two by four and smash it in the head, smash it in the ass, when the farm would come out. Well that was not yeah. nice of you. Yeah, well, me and one of my brothers started running, the other two didn't run fast enough, they caught ass with rock salt. We made it. We made it away far enough. That shit hurts. I wouldn't didn't didn't find out that day. <laughs> it fucking burns, man. It's not fun. But uh, yeah, Arm Gods, fucking awesome. Love it there. All those guys, they treated us real well. I mean, as long as you don't have to listen to Paul talk, he's pretty good too. Well, I stayed with I stayed with Jim Jim Beach. Oh, Jimmy's and awesome. Then- yeah, but as long as Jim, as soon as Jim gets near fucking Paul, his whole fucking voice changes. It's, I can't understand me. We, we, me and, we, we come back from dinner. Me, the, me, wife, his, him and his wife. The girls went home. Me, me and Jimmy went over to the to the podcast, and it was the serial killer from Australia. Can't remember his name. Connolly. But he, he got a smile. Looks like a fucking serial killer. Is that Matt Connolly? Yeah. Is that yeah 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 yeah? He's like. Yes, 
Yes, that's it. He had to, he had to translate fucking both Jim and, and fucking Paul for me. I kept looking. What the fuck did they say? And you need an I, Australian to translate the accents. Well, I've been talking to Jim all night long at the, the restaurant, you know. So we get to a Paul. Man, that fucking voice just goes. Nobody could understand what he was saying the night before that when he came down back to my place. Is that Jim? Yeah. He's got a problem with whiskey, you know? Every time I would hand him a glass, he'd just have this big old fucking grin on his face. He's like, I'll stay for one more. And probably did that to him like 15 fucking times. He said he didn't drink very much that night. Bullshit. Listen, if I'd have known that his wife, his, him and his wife left the house to go, go meet you guys. And five minutes later, his wife come back in. Had I known that he was going by himself, I'd have went with him. Yeah, Man, I, I don't him. know. Fuck it. They just ran out into us at the bar. It's like, yeah, we'll go back to your place for one quick one, and then we'll go back. And then they stayed all fucking night. And then yeah. those little fucking wannabe IRA pricks were threatening to shoot us, and B they was going to decide to make them leave. They threatened to shoot you? And you yeah. let them leave? So these two little pricks, uh, local guys, I guess, they ended up just coming back to drink, whatever. They were funny at the bar. Yeah, sure, come on by for a drink. And then these two little ones that I didn't know at all, they started fucking with uh, Jimmy and uh, his buddy Did there. Like, yeah, like they were like grilling them and side eyeing them and telling them how they're street fighters. And like, Beach is not a small man. Did you see him punch the fucking bag? He got almost a thousand fucking pounds of pressure in his head. The one with my face on it? Yeah, I yeah. saw it. Yeah, I saw oh, it. Thousand pounds of punching pressure. I would not want to get a pro boxer. I found this out later. He looks like right. such a nice guy. I wouldn't want to get hit by that dude. Oh, so wow. they start like side eyeing and grilling him for some reason. And I'm like, they just pick him because he's the nicest guy here. That's fucking not necessarily a good idea, but okay. Then I started poking at Jim, and I was like, hey, Jim, I don't think you could take the two of them. He's like, I outweigh the two of them. Like, I bet you 20 bucks you couldn't beat him. And he just starts, ah, uh, Evan, I know what you're fucking doing. Do you Look, like that? Do you because like that? there's two of them, I'll let you start it with a sucker punch to make it fair. 20 bucks says you won't win. He left all that part out. He probably doesn't right. remember any of that part. But anyways, they kept growing him real hard. I went outside for a smoke, and then I just hear Big B fucking lose his mind on these two. I'm like, uh-oh, got to go. I'm fucking running to the house. B is not a guy that wants to do talking. When his voice comes up, it's about to go down. He's such all a nice right, guy. What's that? He's such a nice guy. Yeah, he is. Just... Until it's time not to be. You know, it's like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. So when I heard B start freaking out, I ran in the house. I grabbed the two little fuckers. I'm like, look, guys, not a good time for you guys to be staying around. I don't want to deal with that when he gets up. So you got to go. And then they try to, like, push off me like, yeah, no, no, we're leaving. Just make him shake my hand. Respect. I'm like, no, you fucking bricks don't listen. So I just picked them both up and carried them out the door. Out you go. Like, look, guys, no reason to have a problem here, but. There's going to be one if you don't leave. So it's just like, have a good night. We'll see you another time. They're like, okay, man, okay. And they walk down the driveway. And when, as soon as they get to their car, now they're tough again. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I, at one point, I, I wanted to just open the door. I'm like, fuck it. B, come handle your business. Like, fuck them. But then it's like, yeah. I just spent this energy saving their lives. And now I got to sentence them to death. Like, guys, just get in your car and go. But then they start yelling at us that they're IRA and they're coming back to shoot us and blah, 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 blah. Connor had to go run and hide in the neighbor's house. Go wake up Bradford. He needs to know that they're coming to shoot us. Go tell him. Like, you go tell him. Connor yells at Bradford. Hey, these guys are coming to shoot us. We're going to hide in the neighbor's house. Bradford looks at me. He's like, how real is this? I'm like, eh, probably not. <laughs> like, all right, I'm going back to sleep. Wake me up if you need me. <laughs> How real is this? Well, I mean, they were fucking saying they were coming back to shoot us. I heard, I heard that uh, Jimmy rounded the corner. Two cars were coming at you guys pretty hard. Yeah, well, I guess when Jim called Connor and said, hey, there's two cars just whoop around the fucking corner coming towards you like real hot. So maybe they weren't lying. Just a heads up. Well, but That's... hey, Beer Man, you knew it was bullshit because how could they come back to shoot you? Guns are against the law. 
Yes. Only criminals have guns. Yeah. Right. Except if you're not a pussy fucking country, you can have guns like we can. And the, the biggest gang of criminals of all always keeps their guns, the fucking government. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's probably true. But, that uh, is true. Yeah, I, apparently those two got pulled over for fucking drunk driving and went to jail that night anyways. I guess before they got back to shoot us, but... Why didn't you rip the car door off when you went over there? Because I didn't care. Yeah, rip... Oh, no, ripping car doors off is fun. Yeah, but dude, these guys are like... I'm telling you, the two of them put together did not weigh as much as Jim. So that's why you rip the car doors. You ain't got to hit the little guys. They're very, very little. And they're like 20 years old. And it's guaranteed mommy's car. Okay. Who okay. cares? Well, mommy didn't do anything wrong. And look, it's just a couple of fucking kids that got too drunk and got a little bit lippy. Is it really worth that, fucking ending them? Eh. What, does that, what does that tell you? Couple yeah, of fucking it means they need to go fucking have a good night's sleep. A couple of fucking degenerates from fucking King, uh, Canada got these poor young kids all fucked up. They weren't drinking our booze. They brought their own. Listen, where were you? Where were you with fucking Marcus? I was on my, on my eight double shot fucking of, of Jameson's the night of the fucking tournament. Holy fuck. I, I thought know, I was but on St. Patty's Day, Big B and I, we drank like a 60 pounder of Jameson's with Marcus, all in shots. Huh. And then we went to the bar, we got all fucked up, we came back. And then B and I took a bottle of Jack Daniels. And we passed it back and forth. We each took three sips out of it and drained the whole bottle. And then, like, five minutes. Like, it was just back and forth, five minutes, a 40 ounce or jack. And when I set the empty bottle down on the table, I just kind of looked at it. Oh, man, that was stupid. Looked over at me and just kind of giggled, like, man, we got about 15 minutes to walk back to the fucking house because after that, walking ain't going to be an option. Listen, you didn't have to walk up the fucking mountain every time you left home. Well, we had to walk up the hill to get to Marcus's. Marcus was the, yeah, Marcus was at the bottom of the hill for where they had us. Oh, you guys were up at the mountain, though. We were at the top. Yeah. Great fucking view, great fucking place, easy to walk down. It's that walk back that stuff. Well, just get drunk and you don't notice. But well, we were drink- that, yeah, that is absolutely true. If you were to drink as much as we did on St. Patty's Day, there's no way you're walking up that fucking mountain. The only way we got home is because it was downhill and I could roll half of it. I must have fallen over 15 times in that fucking mile and a half walk. I fucking fell. I was walking down the road, minding my own goddamn business, and I got sucker punched. By who? The pavement. (laughs) Right out of nowhere. Like, I didn't see it coming. I was, like, trying to talk to B, and all of a sudden, whap, right in the fucking face. Like, just out of nowhere. I did nothing to provoke it. And it hurt, so I laid there for a good minute. And I'm, like, not able to stand up on my own. Holy fuck, was I drunk. And White Wolf goes stumbling across the road, looking at me, not paying attention, straight over the sidewalk, right into this massive fucking thorn brush. And it's just his feet sticking out of the bush, and he's, like, buried. He can't move because the thorns are just shredding into him. And you just hear him yelling, Big B! I need help. <laughs> Fucking B takes a minute, look around, assess the situation. Like, well, Evan's not going anywhere. And as long as the car doesn't run him over, he's okay for now. I'll go get Wolf first. And he had to pull Wolf right out of the butt. Man, just covered in blood and thorns. Like it was like a tag match. Yeah, and then would have been bloodier if we would have used those fucking thorns. Oh, and then the thorns somehow I lost my pants between there and the front door. I don't know. I just heard the stories. You lost your pants? Apparently Wolf carried my pants home. I don't know. You know, isn't Wolf from UK? He's from California. Oh, is he? No shit. I thought he was one of the UK boys. No, White Wolf, he, uh, I think he's a manager at like the uh, Anhauser big warehouse there. No shit. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't talk to him. I talked to him only a little bit. I didn't catch that. I thought I got an accent, but. No, no, no accent. But he was definitely fucked up with those thorns. Like, he woke up in the morning, and the entire bed is just covered in fucking blood. It was, it was, uh, it was quite entertaining. We had a lot of fun in Ireland. 
And that's yes. why I love Arm Guards. That's a nice shirt, by the way, Tim. Thank you. I wore it on. I got it. Huh. Cool. Cool. Where'd you get that from? It says fucking Arm Guards on it. Where the fuck do you think I got it from? Yeah, yeah, yeah but you didn't win anything. How did you get it? Same way, same way you got it. I, I just picked up off the table. Oh, right, you just grabbed it and left. <laughs> fuck it. Somebody else forgot it. It's a cool looking medal. I'm taking it. Listen, listen like fuck. There's no way you're gonna tell me Arm Gods is went all fucking liberal and gave Tim Breslin a participation trophy. <laughs> fuck sakes. Listen, I saw, I saw, I saw my dog and said after I fucking pulled him, I if I'd have held out a little bit longer, he'd have fucking got though. Holy shit. Jesus, dude. After watching that match, I, what I can't figure out about your match is whenever they do the interview at Mendogas, right? Now, I didn't get to watch the match live. I had to be in the back because I'm coming out next, right? So I watched the video of it. And after watching the match, you see Mendogas do the interview and he can barely move his arm. Like, it looks like all fucking pumped up like he's tired. But, I mean, I just watched the match. I didn't see how he would have gotten tired. I don't see either. Yeah, he was... whooped your ass. Like, how did he have enough time to get tired? I only whooped my ass. I mean, he just oh, pinned you four straight. No, that was I... a good match. It was a good match. Was it? Sure he but he 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 went he he went a totally way I didn't think he was gonna go. So every time I try to roll, every time I fucking give him back pressure and try to roll him out, he was already fucking laid right on me. Well, that, and the motherfucker's got like a twelve inch wrist. That's right. But the one they, he's a strong had dude. I, had I done later what I did, if I had I done earlier what I did later, I would have been way better off. But I didn't do that. I tried to fucking roll him back, too much back pressure, and he just he he come like straight across in a shoulder roll. Never expect him to do that. Everything I saw of his was fucking hooking. You know, well, he so hooks like, or he'll drag. He could just. <laughs> Come straight pushed. up and top roll. But, comes, yeah, I've comes. never seen him put his shoulder forward as much as he was in that match. It's because of him, that's because of them Christian Vinny fucking pads you guys got. Fucking things suck. Hey, too long. Too long. Those Christian Vinny's voices pads. Yes. I hate them. Fuck. Why, why did they not stick with regular pads? I don't know. With the elbow pads? Yes. What, because you got an extra inch? Yes. Why don't you just fucking learn how to arm wrestle so you can adapt and adjust? I, I, I know somebody else lost too, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> but I suck. I'm not sitting here trying to claim I'm good like you. I'm not delusional I'm, about it. Holy fuck, you're going to take Ryan Bowen's title. You still think I'm, you're good. I'm 60 fucking years old, man. What the fuck? Yeah. It's okay, okay. to suck, Tim. Yeah, but I... I, I See, I you're still I'm, trying to think you're good. I'm... Still better than you. Yeah, but I suck. How is that a good thing? Oh, it's like winning a gold medal at the Special Olympics. I mean, yeah, it's still not. a gold medal, but fuck, I'd rather not be retarded. There you go. Well, what you'd rather be and what you really are is super thing. Did you watch the <laughs> tech man? I got a touch of the tism. Hey, Thanks. today is National Autism Awareness Day, beer man, so I'm going to be nice to you. Fuck you, Roy. <laughs> Hey, I know, I know, I didn't get yelled at by fucking Ron Bath. Oh. Well, look at this. You see this? You got this fucker, John Milne, in the chat thinking he's going to tell me how to talk to Timmy. Oh, I'm sending John the link. I already have. I specifically John, remember John Milne parking right in front of the diesel pumps to give Tim the finger. <laughs> I, I drive a gas truck now. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I just bought a brand new gas truck, so I don't, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. Wow, you weren't driving a gas truck when he did it. I remember that. I probably would have ran him over with my one of my other trucks. Oh, it was hilarious. Yeah, hopefully like Johnny will hop in here for a bit, but either way, what did you think about that tack match? What I think about it? Yeah. It was, fucking, it was entertaining. I got. I I didn't notice. I got home. I had my legs crossed. Me and the kid we uh, Easter dinner. I had a, I had a fucking tack in my boot. 
And she goes, Dad, are you mailing your vote? And I went, oh, come on. I flipped my foot up. I felt that's the stack match. I've lost a few since the match, but. Just one. I had one. One in, right, one in my foot. I was entertaining, you know. It was, it went, if, if you're, uh, I don't understand why people would get upset about it. I, I, I saw all the shit about it. You know, I read all this stuff. It's just like, it, it is what it was. It's not, it's WWE incarnation, you know. It's the fuck. It, wow, it, man, people got no sense of ha-ha. Fucking relax. You got Uncle John and myself. We're out there. We're willing to fucking take a bit of pain and bleed for entertainment. We're still arm wrestling. It's just got a little something else to it because we're fucking idiots. And it's fun, right? The truth is people are miserable motherfuckers who want to piss and moan and hate about shit that has nothing to do with them whatsoever. They're trying to project their self hate onto other things. It, it, it was at a, it was to me it was entertaining. I like right, that was time. way too many big words. There comes the autism again. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean that's the point of it, right? People that's tune right. in to watch this shit for exactly that. It's entertaining. Hey. It, it took everybody's fucking mind off of me losing <laughs> that before, so... Yeah, <laughs> fuck. Oh, Tim just lost. Everybody bash on Tim. Oh, wait, we're about to see these two dumb motherfuckers <laughs> come arm wrestle on tax. It was a beautiful thing. <laughs> it was a beautiful thing. What was your favorite part of the tax match? Oh, the blood screw. See, I tried, I tried to... The night before, when Uncle John cut his head, at the... Uh, Towards the end of the night, he took the, took the bandage off, and the thing squirting all over the place. So we had two nurses on the side. I didn't know they were nurses. So I said, hey, we'll get my wife. My wife's a dog nurse. We all saw it right up. And I know we're nurses. I'm like, let's cauterize it. You should have burnt it. You should have burnt it. You would have saved them a lot of fucking time and blood if you just would have burnt it on the spot. Uncle John didn't have me say it. <laughs> I, I, I would have I burnt it. If you would have told John... That you'll you'll burn it right now. Fix it right up. Oh, well, you know, I probably would have said yes, but let me get the camera rolling first. No, the camera's already rolling. I, I, just... I should just got hot. The two nurses were getting all freaky with me, though. You ain't burning it. You ain't. Burning. Come on, they burn it. John walked around. <laughs> John walked around looking like an Indian all his of his life. You know, got a big red dot in his forehead. I would have just put my doobie out. I just would have put my joint out right on his forehead. Would have cleared that right up. Yeah, that would have been a painkiller, too. I want to get that picture up red. Okay, so that was the night before. What was your favorite part of the match itself? I was just retarded. Just you two fucking being retarded. I think the refereeing was fucking retarded. Because they oh, wouldn't call John for going early, and then they called me for going early. Wait, you ripped the strap out of fucking Paul's hand. How early is that? He wasn't even done strapping you yet. Early. Uh, way uh, early. All right. Well, look, what's the difference? A little or a lot? If, where do you draw the line? If you're going to let somebody go early, how early are you going to let him go? This so much, what? this much, this much. You know what? I'm not wasting my time going one inch at a time. I'm gonna jump to there. Can we go there? No. Okay. Well, they let they let they, Paul. Paul told me they let the uh, Mangus go. We fouled out one match. They let him go on it. They didn't even call the fouls. So I'm you're sure saying it. you didn't lose four nothing? No, would have been four <laughs> one. I thought he was getting tired though. Uh, see, if I'd have known how tired he was, I would have held on a little bit longer. So what? Wait, you didn't fight as hard as you could. You let it go. Well, I was in a bad position. To? I was in a real bad position. He didn't, you know, I I fell into my own spell where he's not making faces. I didn't see him sitting over the side gasping for air. If I'd have seen that, I'd have held on forever and let him wear out. But I didn't know he was. I didn't know he was that gas. And at the end, he fell and went shit. I should have waited a little bit longer. But it happens. Everybody, everybody loses once in a while. Yeah, he was tired. He was tired. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that early go of mine was uh, perfectly timed. He yeah, was but, just trying to get that strap we through the buckle. It definitely was. Well, I didn't yeah. want to wait until it was already on 
And then John's already like trying to fight me for a grip to go real early. Like, I want to go when he's just loose, dead arm, waiting, relax. Okay. You know, he's going to tighten the strap as he tightens. That's when he starts like cranking his arm, trying to get leverage into the strap. So I got to go before that with his dead arm so I can really drill him into it. He had like 20 fucking, 20 fucking tacks in his arm by the time you're done. Oh, he had you to keep pulling them out, you fucking, them out throw them back on the table. That early <laughs> goal, you fucking whacked him. Like you, <laughs> you went, he went straight to tax. Oh, yeah. You, I fucking buried him. Cut it with a knife. Why? <laughs> Chew it on the fucking bag with his teeth. Just fucking cut it. Just fucking cut it. Oh, look. That. And when I pinned him in the second round in the hook, well, the ref calls pin. I don't let go. I just kept his arm, like, just pushed down into the tax for, like, probably four or five seconds. I think you guys should have stopped being pushes and use fucking roof and nails. <laughs> I was willing to go as far as they wanted so long as the paycheck reflected the amount of pain Straight. I dealt with. Straight. I told them flat out. Match. I will do a fucking table saw match if there's enough zeros on my paycheck. I'd have given you as much zeros as you wanted. I'd have paid you zeros. There's got to be a one in front of them, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, man, if this hand gets the opportunity to make me enough money that I don't have to use this hand to work ever again, I don't need it ever again. Fuck it. How I'd wait to jerk you, off with this hand. How long did you, how long did you, did you work anyway? What? You haven't worked in years anyways, have you? Ish. I still got to start my lives. Oh, my God. And I mean, I'm an artist. I oh draw God. welfare checks. <laughs> oh, my God. Man. There's entire families that make careers out of it. Like, don't fucking look at me like that. Your families, I'm an entire fucking entire cities. I have the <laughs> tism. It's a real disability, Tim. <clears throat> Are you gonna say I'm not retarded? Oh, I never said that. Look, if a government official ever called you up and said, "Hey, do you know this Canadian named Evan Burgoyne?" You're gonna say what? Yeah, yeah, I know the fucking guy. Is he retarded? That it'll it'll come out way before you ask me. See, you don't you don't have a you need a you need a psychologist as a training partner like I have. Then well, he can give you a diagnosis. I got to see a psychologist once, and um, I felt like I was in this uh, movie Goodwill Hunting because it just seemed like he was not that bright. And I got him to sign a little piece of paper that I got put onto the certificate that says, I do not have a drug or alcohol problem. Oh my God. It wasn't very smart either. <laughs> That's what I said. It was like, it was like a combination of Goodwill Hunting and Rain Man, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I know I got a touch of autism, but it's like, I'm smarter than the psychologist because that dude just dumb. He fucking just believed everything I said and Wrote his fucking signature saying, I don't have a problem. Yeah, he missed, he missed the mark on that diagnosis. So well, here, man, that's I, why I, I don't believe in doctors all so much. I have a uh, burning question. I have a burning question, dear man. I was on the Arm Gods live stream yesterday when I was at the gym repping your fucking Max. And uh, Paul Maiden said that by this next, fucking dipshit. By next year, he said they're going to be doing drug testing in Arm Gods. Right, and if you do not have at least this much drugs in you, you're not allowed to compete. How are you going to be there? Are they just but not you just got to fail the drug test? Are they are they just going to have pity on you and not test you, or just not care? I mean, what are they going to do? Well, I mean, it depends. Like, if I got to take a drug test, I'm pretty sure I'm going to pass. Yeah, I'm pretty good with drugs. Give me them, I'll pass. <laughs> He's talking about. Let's go with drug, drug testing. I'm I'm down. I get it. That's like when they told the Iron Sheik in the WWF, they said, Sheik, your test came back positive. He said, oh, that's good. Sheik is always positive. <laughs> Sounds about fucking right. The Iron Sheik was fucking nuttier than squirrel shit. He yeah, was he was awesome. Yeah, he was fucked up. 
I thought he's funny. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when they ask you on your like job applications about drugs and stuff, it's like, man, it's just so much faster for me to list the ones I've never done. You want me to go ahead and start? Okay, we're done. Good? Good. Like, how is that any of your goddamn business? Iron Gods is not fucking doing drug testing next year. Paul Maiden's, one, a lying piece of shit. And two, <laughs> if you didn't know, he's a fucking lying piece of shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no fucking way Iron Gods is doing drug testing. They had a fucking breathalyzer there, and if you weren't drunk enough, you weren't allowed to arm wrestle. I right? drunk. The only drug testing they're going to do is like, hey, well, you get to go and hang out in that room with the Candyman or that room with Big B. If you fucking make it through an hour, you can go compete. Yeah. He had RBJ on the, <laughs> there, and RBJ, RBJ was singing the Natty National Anthem. So, you know, I mean, not that they were serious. I mean, I don't know what you're, you know, what you've been told, but he seemed like he wasn't kidding. There has never been an arm wrestler that has ever had people know his name that was Natty. Rob Vision Jr. What? Rob Vision Jr. No, no, no. I said natural. Like, has never done steroids. That's what I'm saying. Rob Vision, Rob Vision yeah, no, Jr. No, 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 no. But I don't think you understand. Like, you have, you never done steroids, though. Rob Vision Jr. No, 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 no. Like, I know that Rob's on steroids. I'm saying. You no, know, he's not. <laughs> I don't believe he is. Tim. I don't believe it. Tim. He can't, he can't no, just no. because he screams from the top of the fucking mountains, I hate steroids and never do them. I pretend like I'm dumb. I know six year olds that know more about steroids than he pretends to know. As long as he's been having these conversations with the intelligence that he has, there is no fucking way that he doesn't know as much as he pretends not to know. He is playing fucking dumb. Also, add in everything else we know about Rob. What? He snaps off the fucking handle all the time. He moves really reckless. Guy. Fucking, he's oh, yeah, him. that's not a pretty fucking telltale sign that somebody's running fucking hot. Oh, <laughs> wow, look at the giant fucking peaks on the little prick. Yeah, that's, you're going to tell me that ain't sent off? Fuck off. The dude's fucking hotter than Camel Piss. No, he's not. What does what no. what sent off got to do with steroids? What has it got nothing to do with the other? I don't know anything about steroids. I'm just saying words. I thought you said that. But Rob uses them. He knows. He's not uh, on. If he, if he was on, if he ever fails a drug test, he will have to like disappear because he will do. Like he has been like the loudest, most anger filled preacher about it for years, and I get it. I get it because he's not doing it. And he's getting beat by guys who are doing it, and it pisses him off. And I get Why, it. Who beats him? Uh, Zurab. Not uh, even in the same weight class. Uh, 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 they fucked him up, but Sasho. Sasha. Sasha mm-hmm. fucked him up, but I don't know if that's even a steroid issue. That could very well be a Rob hasn't fucking done shit in a year and a half issue. Yeah. But Sasha probably still would have fucked him up. Anyways, Sasha's fucking pretty bad. Sasha wouldn't, he, Sasha wouldn't even be in his weight class but for steroids. Why? Are you saying Sasha's on steroids? <laughs> No, I'm not. I don't have oh, to say Oh, why? That. Because this fucking little dude has these giant fucking biceps. They're on steroids, but Rob's clean. I I know almost everybody is. I don't give a shit. I don't care. But I get, I'm just saying that Rob is not, or he would not have just fucking sang that song for so many years. Like He, he who yells the loudest <laughs> is the no. guilty one. Yeah, I hear you, but I'll be Rob not. Yeah, it's oh. like it's like that fucking girlfriend that's always yelling at you for cheating. But like the worst thing I do is go over to my buddy's place two doors down the road and drink fucking beer on a Friday night. What do you mean I'm <laughs> cheating? No, the reason that she's yelling about cheating is because she's f- fucking guilty and projecting that she's always out doing it. Right? That's why she's always yelling about it. The one that's always yelling about it is the one that's guilty. Your girlfriend's yelling about you cheating again? I didn't say me. <laughs> oh, I just said. You said yours. You know, you were talking I about said yours, girlfriend. and I was talking to Roy, not you, Timmy. Um, ah, I don't have a girlfriend. Right, because she fucking got too tired of all the cheating and lying. And you were like, but I wasn't cheating or lying. She was like, I know. I still got to leave. Yeah, somebody just pointed out RVJ just did that tested super match like a little while ago. 
That's Holy just, Christ. All you got to do is run suspension for a fucking few days after the test. Like, you could run that shit after the test the same day and still pull that night and be hot as fuck. Just get a little Certo. New little Certo. Like Fucking like John Milne. To be honest, my ex-girlfriends were right when they said that. <laughs> yeah, I knew that, John. You're that guy with the fucking Marlboro hat on with the mustache and the sideburns. No, he, he doesn't grow sideburns. Did you yeah. um? Did you end up going to Belfast, Tim? I did. I definitely did. You, did. did you do the tour? I know. I, I I got a tour from. We got picked up by the Belfast team. They gave us they gave us a five hour tour of the coast, Belfast, everywhere, all over the place. Brought me dinner. That's awesome. Good, good, yeah, it was. It was. I mean, you couldn't you couldn't have paid for a better tour. I mean, did you enjoy the UK? Team. What's that? How did, did you, you enjoy the, the UK? Well, I enjoyed the. I enjoyed the, the uh, Irish coast really well. Then my phone started my phone started barking that I went across went across the border in the UK. But it was it, the, 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 the guy took wait his he, he wasted his whole day on me just showing me everywhere. They brought me to the Queen's residence. They brought me they, they brought me where the Titanic was built. He brought me everywhere. You you couldn't have paid for a better tour. Nice. You, you absolutely you, they, they treated me well. <coughs> but it yeah. was nice all of the Irish people that we had to deal with except for those two little punks were like super fucking <coughs> hospitable awesome people <coughs> like even our cabbie there Squirrely Dan but that's, that was cool. that's one of my fucking favorite testimonies to armed gods and how we are doing something right that dude he gave us a cab ride you know Asked us what we're doing in Ireland. We told him, like, we're doing the arm wrestling at, over here at the Foy Center. He's like, oh, fuck, when's that? So I said, Saturday night. He's like, and, like, we could just show him. Like, yeah, you can buy your tickets at the door. Come on over. You should check it out. It's going to be a good time. He convinced his buddy to come with him. They're like, let's go check out this arm wrestling thing. And his buddy was giving him a hard time. Like, this is going to be boring as fuck. It's going to be like going and watching fucking people play darts. And I'm telling you, if that's what it is, I'm making you pay for my fucking ticket, you know. He didn't want to do it, but they came anyways, and both him and his buddy, they had to leave early because they had to be up early in the morning for work, so they didn't get to see, like, the last half of the show, but they both went home and signed up at armgods.com and bought their membership so they could watch the rest of the show later because it was so fucking awesome, and then whenever <laughs> Squirrely Dan drove us again, he told us that, uh, he told us that whole story, as look. I don't know if I'm an arm wrestling fan. I've never seen any other arm wrestling, just arm gods. But I know I'm a fucking arm gods fan. That shit was entertaining. Yeah, he's a good dude. He picked, he picked us up to go to uh, Dublin. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, great yeah, guy. Then he brought us he brought us on another tour of the mountain. He brought us down all these little lot these little friggin' shoot pads all, all over the place. Good dude. He, another one brought us on another tour. It was good people. Real good people. I mean, if this is just a random dude. That has never heard of arm wrestling before. And he comes to the show and immediately he goes home and signs up because he wants to watch more of it because yeah. of how entertaining it is. Like clearly we're doing something right at Arm Gods. Well, I, I thought I thought he had something to do with it. I thought it was like one of Marcus's people. Um no, but he apparently. just drives for that guy, and Marcus like had a deal worked out for all of these driving arrangements and stuff and yeah, he, he had no idea that it was arm wrestling related that he was doing all these drives. Well, he, he came up. The only reason he knew I, who I was because I had a freaking I had an arm on the back of my jacket. Not I wore that jacket. He wouldn't have been able to find me in the fucking airport. Yeah, and he'd already <laughs> driven us a couple of times because we were there like a week and a half early. Yeah. He could get, like I said, Marcus, I told I told Marcus we were leaving Wednesday to go to Dublin. We were going to take the train. And all of a sudden I get a call two hours later asking what time he wanted the cab to pick me up. I'm like, what? What time you want to pick you up? I'll pick you up at noon time, you know? Sure. Man, like, Marcus is a good dude like that. Like, he he had a lot of shit to take care of, trying to sort out rides and cabs and everything for so many people like that, which, fuck, people don't get that kind of treatment when they go to events like that. But we do there. But Marcus was supposed to be picking me up personally, right? Like, Marcus and I are buddies. No, I'm picking you up. I'll meet you here. I'll, this day we'll do this. Everything. Man, that motherfucker 
Not once did he show up. <laughs> well, he did no. bring us on a booze run. And every other did. time, he faked sick. Oh, I got the flu. I need antibiotics. No, you're fucking hung over because you tried to keep up with the Canadians. And the Irish can't drink word of shit. Oh, fuck. I tell, fuck I tell you, the Scottish can drink. The Scottish are now the Woodquay drinking champions. It was the Welsh. Last year, the Welsh had to tell them to piss off at about 6, 6.30 in the morning. The fucking Scottish at fucking 10 a.m. I said, listen, boys, I'm going to bed. You guys either fucking go sit the fuck down or go to the bar or something. And they went to the bar and started fucking drinking more. There's some fucked up boys over there. They can drink. And then, uh, and then when I kicked them out at 10, uh, fucking 12 o'clock, the cleaning team, the, the cleaning team was coming in telling us we had to piss off. I said, holy shit. Then we had to get all our shit, go to Oyster Bay, and then fucking we went to McEvitt's, and it was a pretty fucking, it was a spicy brunch, especially Matias. Matias was definitely not feeling well that day. Oh, so. that was so fucking awesome. Matias was such a fucking animal last night. Oh, yeah. Fucking, yeah. just fucking smash all the whiskey. Like, we had a good bottle of fucking nice whiskey. And it's like, this is not for taking shots. Like, this is sipping whiskey. Enjoy this stuff. It tastes good. It's smooth. It's fucking lemon. This is not the cheap stuff. You're not just fucking pounding and trying to get drunk. You enjoy this stuff. He's like, I don't know how to do that. I just want to shoot. I'm like, fuck, do it. Ah! So I pour him another one. He's like, can it, can it, can it. Ah! And then he's like trying to shoot a double <laughs> leg on fucking Matarangi all night. <laughs> but yeah, B kicks him out of 10. We get like half an hour worth of actual sleep. And then we, we got to leave. So yeah. we carry everything over to the fucking like, Oyster Bay, bring it back there. And it's like, well, I'm not going to bed at fucking like noon. So we just went down to the bar. And lo and behold, there's the Scots all fucking hammered to pet. <clears throat> yeah. right, well, let's get back to drinking with them then. I think I got a total of like 14 hours sleep in the 13 days I was in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have to be on really friendly terms with Monarangi to try to double egg him. Oh he's man, another, he's a I, had to, I started picking a fight he's with Matarangi just to, so that Matarangi didn't eat Matias. <laughs> He'd eat both of y'all. Oh, absolutely. But I, I was picking a fight with him in a friendly way, you know. Yeah. I just offered my services. Like, hey man, we can fight. It'll be fun. He, he just kind of laughs. I'm like, just like, don't actually kill me though. Like, what my ass is okay. Just don't actually kill me, man. Then he just kind of laughs, and Matias, I think he ran home. He went to my bedroom, puked in my shower, and then ran home. It might have been shit, and he just left the shower on, trying to wash it down. I'm not sure. Uh, one thing I say about Medirengi, that guy acted the same all the time, no matter whether he was just, like, in the morning or, like, at, like, 5 in the morning when he's had fucking 100 drinks. He was still the exact same guy, like, just not, not off kilter one little bit. Just at like stoic and stone faced. At about, at about five in the morning, when people realized that, I guess maybe they thought he was with his, his girlfriend or his mom or something when they realized it was his aunt. And like in all the thirst bags there, fucking, uh, and the sun's coming up, he's like, all right, I, th I, I think I'm going to leave now. <laughs> people started looking at his aunt a little squirrely. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm off like a prom dress. I'll catch you guys later. Oh, man, he was a good dude. Just always stone faced the whole time. And it always just looks like he's looking around like he wants to eat people. Like, how much salt and what's the cooking time on this one, right? But he just looks like that. As soon as you talk to him, big smile all the time. Fucking awesome. <laughs> awesome dude. <coughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. It's a cool guy. Cool guy for sure. Fucking, uh, it takes a certain kind of man to fucking put that much ink on their face. You know what I'm saying? He's, oh, he, he's, he's committed. He's committed to what he does. It does not seem fun. I mean, no. tattoos just hurt in general. But half of my face? Fuck. And his is like, and his is like big line work. It's just, it's done with like a huge liner, which fucking, that's got to suck. <laughs> yeah, the lining is far more painful than the fucking shading. 
Oh, no, exactly. I seen it. Like, whatever yeah, liner that he used, he used a liner. huge gauge liner and just did the whole fucking face. I'd have to have fucking stung. Mr. Peanut, maintaining a consistent blood alcohol level is the sign of a responsible drinker. That is what B and I did the entire time in Ireland. We may have spiked a bit on St. Patty's Day, oh, but it was St. Patty's Day. Outside of that, we just tried to maintain like a healthy thirty to forty pint a day range. I'm not. I'm not going to start naming names, but there's some people on that that were lucky that I was there for that trip because otherwise things might not have went the way they went. You know what I mean? If I wasn't around. You had to get um, White Wolf out of the thorn bush. Well, that's the, that's just the, the, that's just the stuff people know about. <laughs> you know, the, that's the fun stuff. <laughs> people know about the ugly stuff there. <laughs> Is there stuff I don't know about? Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know how much you can. I mean, you probably know about it, whether you remember or not. Is is a different story. I do have a bit of issues with my memory. My my fucking memory works about as good as fucking Timmy's left hand. Sure. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, oh, fuck. Hey, Tim can still beat you left-handed beer, man. <coughs> Timmy, you're going to have to fucking correct him on this. There's no way you're going to let that slide. Your sound just went really low, Tim. Oh. No, now, you, now you're good. Wait, keep talking. Okay. I said, I said no. So no one can't beat ever left-handed. Right. Roy, fuck you. Shut up, Roy. Come on, Tim. Don't underestimate yourself. He sucks. He can't beat anybody. <laughs> oh, man. Roy, you backstab a little bitch. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> he got himself a line of new fucking cum socks, and now he's not even nice to me oh, anymore. Man. And I actually didn't even know you. Oh, I'll tell you what, man. That fucking... I've had like two airplane rides that have fucking nearly traumatized me. And the way home is one of them. And the fucking worst part is, is these fucking jamokes were sleeping for all the worst parts of it. But, but, it, but his old lady wasn't impervious to it because it still fucking collapsed her lung. That's how bad the turbulence was on our plane, man. I fucking slept one. right through all of it. They were talking about I What's fucking that? look back. I look back to go, I'm like, I'm like, are you guys fucking like seeing this shit? And they're just going like this. Uh, fucking I don't like, yeah. limber, loose, just sleeping, just up and down. I had the, head, I had the neck pillow, man. But I was good. I, oh, I slept for like seven hours of the six and a half hour plane ride there. No, oh, fuck. The plane like, ride I, was asleep, I was asleep before we took off, and I yeah. landed. Where were we, the plane fly landed, out? I woke up. But I was asleep on the tarmac for probably half an hour before we left. Where'd you, where'd you fly from? Toronto? Yeah, Toronto yeah. to Dublin. Yeah, straight. yeah, Dublin to Toronto. But like we were on, we were on the 737, which is a small fucking plane. It's only like a single aisle. Like, I mean, think it could make that trip. You know what I mean? And so that's got to be the, the tail end we of just, the fuel capacity. Like, the whole time we were just battling fucking crazy turbulence, man. Like we were fucking flying up and down and up and down. It was. I was fucking, I was praying, man. I was fucking praying. I'm like, I'm like, let me fucking, I'm like, let me touch the ground one more time, please, man. I don't want to fucking die in the air. You got to fix your thing, Tim. What? Like the last two <laughs> hours of the flight, he was flying that little fucking jet up at 40,000 feet, which is not proper fucking flying altitude for that thing because it was so fucking rough. So the turbulence passed out <clears> so hard. I guess it felt like the plane just dropped 100 feet instantly and slammed. And before it yeah. caught itself again. And apparently it should have woke me up, but it didn't. But no. Steph sitting beside me hit so hard that she had, um, it, it's very scientific. I don't want to get into the whole thing, but there's things called blems that turn into bullets when they become a cluster, blah, blah, blah. So the turbulence impact actually knocked it loose inside of her lung, which punctured her lung and collapsed her left lung. Yeah. So. The whole drive home, like six hours of listening to her complain about not being able to breathe, and my chest hurts, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't want to hear this anymore. Fuck. <laughs> right? And then we get back. She goes to work. She does her fucking eight-hour shift, fucking lifting people up into the fucking x-ray machines and x-raying titties and mammograms and stuff. 
And comes home, still complaining. I'm like, holy fuck, have you not given up complaining about this yet? The day after, she goes into work again. And she's like, you know what, fuck it. She works at the hospital. She's like, I'm just going to go register at the ER and then come work until they call my name and they'll, I'll, I'll run over. She runs over. They send her in for an x-ray and her fucking left lung is collapsed. So she's been Damn. walking around for the last like week with a fucking tube hanging out of her ribs, letting the air out and shit. And she also fucking broke her tailbone. The day we got there. Yeah. Saturday, the day before St. Patty's Day. She yeah. got all fucking drunk up. First time in Ireland. Fucking <laughs> gotta start fucking drinking. Yeah. It's fucking loaded. I show her where the bathroom is. She's like, okay, I'll be out in a minute. She backs into the bathroom door, fucking stumbles back right into the sink and broke her fucking tailbone. Yeah. So she spent the whole week walking around with us like what ten miles a fucking day with a broken tail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she was she was trooping it out because you could tell like she was in she wasn't having a good time, but she was having a good time. You know what I mean? She's like anytime like, she's moving around or walking, she's going through hell, but she's loving what she's looking at and doing. So it was a real double edged sword. Well, she's from the valley, so yeah. even though she's a little girl from the valley, that still out drinks the men from Ireland. Yeah, 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 no, for sure. Stuff. Right, she went shot for shot with us on the bottle of Jameson before the bar. Yeah. I got to sit down with you drinking one time. Long you time don't do that, Tim. Look, you're an old man. I don't want to be responsible for any deaths. Yeah, trust me that. As long as I got to go anywhere, I'm, I'll sit down and drink with you. Yeah, drink with you. It's, I, I, I tell you right now, it's, it's always a good time, no matter what. Like... You're, you're, you're going to see something that will even shock and awe you. Like, me, I'm, I'm pretty hard to shock, you know what I mean? But every time I go to the valley and sit down, I'm going to see something. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to be like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Especially whenever Borton it's comes true. out to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially when all his cousins and all the valley dwellers, like, you see some fucking characters. It's an interesting bunch around here. But <laughs> yeah, it is. It really it is. It wouldn't be a bad time to just sit down. Everybody get their own bottle. And, like, you know, we got Timmy and, like, Mike Gould and a few of the old lads. Like, you know, the old guard. Like, the guys that were around when men were allowed to be fucking men. Right? Just to get them fucking drinking their scotch or whatever it is they're fucking into. And to hear the old stories that were never allowed to put on YouTube. I love it when Mike Gould's getting after it. When Mike's getting after it, he's having a great time. That's all I tell you. When Mike Gould's been after it, he's having a fucking good time. And John Milne. John Milne's another one of the dudes that I want there. Those are probably my three favorite fucking arm wrestlers just to sit and chat with. Timmy, Mike Gould, and John Milne. Mike's a bad boy. Mike's a bad boy. <laughs> Man, Mike doesn't fuck around. You know? I've heard stories about Mike. I've heard Mike tell me stories about Mike. Very reliable source. <clears throat> yeah, it's a, it's a reliable source. <clears throat> he gets yeah. all drinking, though. And he <clears throat> fucking starts side-eyeing and getting squirrely on me. I'm like, Mike, what are you doing, man? Don't do this. The first time I met Mike, he was pulling the NAA. He got in a fight with his wife and almost killed, like, four people. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get him. He's yelling. He wasn't even hit his wife. He was yelling at his wife. They are yelling back and forth. Some assholes decided to get involved. That wasn't yeah, yeah, mind, mind your business, guys. Mind your fucking business. Oh, I've heard some fucking good ones from him. Well, Actually, a guy and his wife have never argued before. You know what I mean? Let's let let's get involved. You know, like fucking. <laughs> so speaking of like third party stories that I've heard, I don't I like know if it. I've ever asked you about this, and it's been like fucking ten years since I heard. You know, some type of fucking convoluted version. But there was an incident at maybe a UAL involving Travis, where he bought a bunch of dudes. It wasn't UAL. What was it? It was uh, Our Wars. So, you know the one I'm talking about, though. Exactly what you're talking about. Can you tell me the story? Well, me, me and Travis. Me and- me and Travis had had a, having a hard time. Because Travis was running his Travis mouth is over. a cocksucker. He's running his mouth over the internet like usual. But he knew he had to show up in the same place. And he showed up with these two dudes, good-sized guys. 
they were, I, they were eyeballing me, and I'm like, fuck, I'm all by myself. I guess we're going to fucking gonna go. Richard Lupkus was probably the biggest I've ever seen him at that, that point. It fucking, I mean, his fucking shoulders were like... Yeah. You know, he, Richard Lupkus, he, it doesn't matter if he's fucking 35 or 65, he's the biggest he's ever been. He's been he's, 330 pounds with 3% body fat forever. He was he was 319. Yeah, I think he was running about nine percent, eight percent, eight nine percent body fat. Fucking fucking, animal, that guy. Yeah, but never heard Richard get mad before. Have you ever heard Richard yell? No, I've never seen anybody dumb enough to make him. Well, that day he yelled, he yelled very loudly. So what was all the beef shot. over? I think it started out with um with Gary Roberts being a fucking cunt. Um. That's that's AAA Nationals. I can see that. And uh, I said something about I told some guy some they were doing a documentary about some ex wrestler that was starting to arm wrestle. Gary was being a fucking retard. And um, who was it? Him, yeah, you I mean, you know doing that fucking snarling bullshit on the fucking table. Karen 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 Bean had told me don't let him do that because it look makes us look fucking stupid. Blah blah blah. blah. So I didn't let him do it. So. By the end of it, I told the guys, "Listen, that is not representative of most arm wrestlers." And Gary got <laughs> Gary got fucking pissed off. I was on the stage in my stripes. Gary started running his mouth. I said, "Don't let me take my fucking shirt off, dude. I'll come off the stage. I'll fuck you up." <laughs> I bet Gary showed his beak quick. I bet Gary showed his fucking beak real quick. Well, the stripe came off. I thought Karen was gonna save him. Which which did which happened? Karen saved him. Then Gary went into this big fucking bullshit thing with. Making all kinds of cracks on fucking Facebook, you know, let the pussies fucking do. They do. They don't do anything fucking live. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. I can't see anybody. No, we're still here. Anyways, so it, it Gary was being ass online, and fucking Travis got involved because Travis and fucking Gary are Gary's a Travis nut swinger. Yeah, and that's what happened. And he's, he showed up that fucking show. We we're in a fucking hotel room. Got two dudes with him, and I was like, I thought we were gonna go, and fucking Lucas lost his fucking mind. Started yelling, Anybody fucks with you, Tim, I got your fucking back. I'm like, Oh shit, he scared me, he's on my side. <laughs> I was yeah. that. No yeah, more eyeballs. No, no, unless you're totally fucking insane, you will straighten the fuck up when you hear Richard Loki start yelling. <laughs> it, was a, it was a very pleasant after that, not real pleasant. <laughs> Was just no tension, real pleasant. I never heard Richard yell. I never heard yell after that. I even fucking pissed. Man, it's just so hard to see him doing that. I mean, I've heard stories like from Richard about some of the shit that uh, has gone on in his life. Just funny instances that he kind of just chuckles about. You know, sloughs it off. Like when he was still wrestling and he was in Japan and. You know, these guys wanted to try him, and he kindly asked them to not do this tonight. Like, he's having dinner with his wife, Shirley, who's such a sweetheart. And they just wouldn't take the hint when he politely told them to fuck off multiple times. And I guess one of them touched him or something, or maybe leaned on the table, and Richard decided that is way too close to Shirley, and now he has to do something. So he reached over, grabbed the guy by the fucking nuts, stood up with him overhead, and just threw him right through the fucking window of the restaurant. But before releasing him out the window, he felt the guy's nuts, like, explode, pop in his hand. Oh, <laughs> and, he, and he just kind of laughs about, you know, like, Japan was in the 80s. It was a, it was a time. <laughs> he just grab, grab an Asian dude by his nuts and fucking squeeze him until they're no more. I think... Me telling Bert this story is why he got the way he got. Is it that I was just thinking about that? That must have been what inspired him to start doing what he does. Uh, my my youngest brother likes to grab dudes by the pecker and pronation curls with the walking around the house carrying them by the dick. That's a very good move. Yeah. Uh, let, let me ask a quick question: Did you say Richard Lovekeys was arm wrestling in Japan, or he was? Pro wrestling in Japan. Pro wrestling. He, I didn't. I didn't know he did that. He was never WWF. He did New Japan stuff or old Japan stuff, whatever. In the eighties, he was. 
He did pro wrestling, uh, local stuff, and then so, Japan. He did. He was WWF for a short time. He didn't like it. I, so good. I can't confirm if he was actually in the WWF or even the WWWF. Um, but whether it was the, you know, yeah, any one of those other WCWs, the fucking any one of them, like, um, I mean. I know he was buddies with uh, Scott Norton and shit, who, and they both arm wrestled and did pro wrestling. Um, Norton Nor was supposed to come back for a while. They were talking about him coming back. Yeah, wrestling. he was talking about it not that long ago. But so that was one of the funny stories I heard from Richard about that, that he just sloughs off, like, ah, you know, it was it, just a bit of high school fun type deal. Yeah, you explode somebody's fucking testicles and throw them through a fucking plate window. Ah, you know, we were kids. <laughs> I just thought but, about, I just, uh, the thought of someone actually doing that to your testicles would be. Oh man, funny. like, don't try to fucking get the image. Like, you will, if you were a man, well, I just, you I just will automatically so cringe this. thinking about your nut being exploded. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, well, that's or like when you brutal. see them fucking take the two bricks and clap it over a bull's nuts. Ugh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Never Reminds me of one of the time I got the clap back in 1914 before fucking penicillin was invented. Anyways, that'll, that'll, that'll jam me up. So, that'll, that'll Lucas, huge motherfucking strong man. Anybody that doesn't know him, that's, you know, in the chat, any one of you seven that are actually watching this bullshit. Uh, guys on the chat? Yeah, there's like seven or eight guys in there. Uh, but anybody that's just like new to arm wrestling, they only started, you know, after COVID when a lot of people did. If you don't know who Richard Lubkiss was from back in the day, this dude was a fucking leviathan. Yeah, so he it really was. So 2015, he had a super match against Mike Gould at the Mike Gould Classic. And that's the only day I've ever met Richard in person. And, you know, bit of a fanboy myself. I'd only been arm wrestling like three years at this time. I'm like, when am I ever going to get a picture with Mike Gould and Richard Lubkiss ever again in my life? I got to do it. Both of those dudes weighed in at 330, but Richard's 6'2", and Mike's 5'8". Richard's 6'6". Six, six. No, he's not. Richard is 6'6", six, 6'5". Six, six, not when I met him. Oh, he must have shrunk then. I mean, I'm just throwing a number out there. I'll, I'll go 6'4". I'll give you that. Say, I'm not uh, going any I'll, higher. That's it, 6'4". I I'm a hot I'm boy. Roy's probably Googling it right now to find out how tall he is, but... I think I heard him say he was 6'3", or maybe read that he was listed at that. But the, yeah, you know, there's no he's... way he's 6'6". Six, six. Devin has definitely always been taller than him. All of their old matches, you can tell Devin's taller. Devin's 6'6", six, six, or just shy of. Richard Ross would have bent over half the time, that's right. That might be a thing, but from what I saw... I don't think he's six two six three is what I what I assume he is after me. Awesome. Awesome, man. But this is twenty fifteen and he's been a fucking Leviathan for forty years by then. Either way, so Mike and Richard are talking and you know, I come over like, Hey guys, you think I can get a picture? My wife's got a camera there. Like, absolutely. And both Mike and Richard are great dudes. Right. So they turn me around, I'm standing in between the two of them. I weighed in at two eighty eight that day. And I look like I'm a fucking child between these two guys, right? They both got 40 pounds on me, give or take. But there, there's a lot different compositions. Yeah, and their right? they're muscle, they're muscle, and you're mostly fucking Bud Light. Their muscle, and you're <laughs> fucking stupid. Nobody likes you, Roy. So shut up. <laughs> Was okay, it as good so as a picture you the fucking I, transvestite? I get this picture between these two, right? You blew over me. Yeah, well, I can't hear you. You didn't fix your earpiece again. <laughs> as good as a picture you're doing the transvestite? <laughs> Tim. <laughs> I regret ever showing you that picture. He didn't show it to me. John did. It had nothing to do with the transvestite. I didn't arm wrestle when I hung out with trannies. Okay? What can relax. You should be here. What? What are you drinking? Nothing. Just, why are you worried about that? I'm telling a story, Tim. Okay, yeah, so fucking relax. I need to sip my beer. 
Okay, so I'm standing <laughs> between the two guys, and they take a picture, right? And Richard's got his hand, like, on my shoulder here, and my wife takes a picture. And then I tried to excuse myself, like, thanks for the picture, guys. You know, I won't take up any more of your time. I tried to excuse myself. And Richard moves his hand from my shoulder to the back of my neck. It squeezes. Now, I don't want to yell, like, I don't want to sound like a bitch, but I'm like, it just kind of straightened up a bit, and he just picks me up ever so gently. So, like, I'm not in the air, but, like, I'm struggling with my toes to keep a balance, and he just turns me a bit and says, my wife wants a picture, too. Smile. Yes, sir. So, he holds me like that. Shirley takes a picture, and he sets me down. He's like, now you can go. <laughs> like, That's I'm Richard. 288 pounds, and he just picks me up and just, just enough that I'm trying to, like, keep balance kind of thing. Like, he doesn't want to ask. He, I'm sure he could have just picked me fucking up. It was fucking ridiculous. And he was actually surprisingly gentle. Like, he grabbed me by the neck, back of the neck and, like, squeezed, but he was picking me up, like, at the base of the skull and just lifting. Like, it was some fucked up. Hilarious. So, you... Should hear the version of the story about the Travis thing that I heard. Okay, good. Wow, well, we need to get Ian Carney to tell it, but nobody wants to talk to him. Well, so. how, how, how the fuck would he know? He's never been fucking out of your country. I so, know. Right? Everybody tells stories. They fucking, you know, that was a game. He wasn't there. Oh, man. I've got some great fucking stories about arm wrestlers that I was not there for. Oh, that I have told to the guy to find out how close was it. And they were like, yeah, that's not how it happened. But you tell it your way because it's a way better story. Um, Travis and you were having this whatever on the old uh, Northeast boards. Yeah, where probably. Travis is just running his mouth. And yeah, you're probably. signing in saying, this is Tim Bresden, not Pete Milano, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Travis, he gets really fucking tough on the internet. He does. <laughs> <laughs> and he was saying an awful lot of things getting right out of pocket, like things that he would never say face to face. He wouldn't. But says he will. So then the event comes along, and you're there, he's there, and he's got a couple of like fucking henchmen type dudes with him, just big dudes there to kind of thing. Right? But this was all at the event. It was. And then all was. of a sudden. Wait, I'm telling the exact same story you just told. You are. <laughs> Fuck. Ian You're told wrong. me the right story. He did. No, just kidding. That's not how it went. I know the truth. But no, either way, no. Richard walked out to them and just said, if anybody's got a problem with Tim, they got a problem with me. Yeah, and exactly also, Travis's you. friends weren't really his friends, and they weren't there anymore. And oh, then no, Travis got nice again. But yeah, everybody got really peaceful. Exactly what I said happened. Right. <laughs> I just said it was the same block of story. Yeah, he fucking he, he he yelled kind of so loud and kind of scared me. And he was on my side. Uh, what was happening though is I got two stories kind of crossed. Which was the one where you fucking took your shirt off coming across the stage? You were pissed. I never took my shirt off. Oh, that was with fucking uh, Gary Roberts. Is that the same thing, though? That start, that's what started the whole thing. Oh, mm -hmm. so that was the event before, but it was the same. Well, it was months and months before. Okay. Gary Roberts, Gary Roberts got too stupid. He took a little stuffed animal dog and put So when you said, off. if I got to take my shirt off, it ain't going to go well. But in fact, you did take your shirt off. It came I off. thought there was something where somebody was giving fucking Richard a hard time or something. That was it. That was in uh, Vegas. That we, were, we were on uh, Fairmont Street in Vegas. At the uh, podium, now it was, it was Richard, it was Shirley, Mike Gould, somebody else, and then me. And it's also online. If you, this guy online had been being stupid. He was friends with an arm wrestling with uh, Lisa Wolf. At the beginning of the show, she comes up to me and says, "Hey, don't you know this guy? Just kidding around." I'm like, "Oh, you talking about that fucking jerk off from fucking the internet?" So I really don't give a fuck. You know, I I don't care. So everything's cool. And then a couple hours later, Richard leans over to me and says, if you don't shut this motherfucker up, 
He's I'm gonna fucking turn around and kill him. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit. Richard swear. Rich is a Christian. Richard don't swear. I'm like, I'll take care I've of never him. Never heard him curse. He cursed. He says, if you don't shut this motherfucker up, I'm gonna turn around and eat, eat curse. That's what that's what set, set me straight up. So I think of being being the fucking responsible person I was, I went and talked to Lisa Wolf. I said, listen, you better tell these dudes to lay off because they're running them out to Richard, her son, and this other asshole. So, Tim Bresnan being the nice guy, trying to save lives. So then, See, that's Richard, what I did with these little kids. Well, Richard had taken a walk, he was so pissed. So what does Lisa and the two fucking boys do? They start yelling at fucking Shirley. So I grabbed the promoter. I said, listen, you don't get that fucking off of her and Richard comes back, it's not going to be a good deal. So they get kicked out. All right. except for one of them. I threw him over the fucking the banister. I just don't get why some people are that fucking dumb. Like, I'm who the fuck in their right mind would think I'm it's a whole. good idea to piss off Richard Lumpkiss? Like, and I don't give a fuck how big and bad you are. I don't care if you've been fighting fucking martial arts your whole life. It doesn't matter how skilled you are. At some point, size and strength fucking very much matter. Especially when he he, he, he can fight. I can't see him being fast or, like, able to roll his hips over real well. If he gets a hold of you and gets his hands on you, you're fucked. But there's a certain level of strength that just trumps everything, right? Like, you take a guy like Roy Baker, yeah, sure, he's an old fat retard, but he will crush any six-year-old in the world, right? I don't care if they've been, if they're fucking monks and they're perfect technique. Like, this fat old man is going to crush him. He's just too strong and big for these little kids, right? That's, That's right. what it'd be like if you're a professional fighter trying to deal with Richard. He's just fuck. Well, I mean, on top of the fact, me and Mike Gould are sitting in the same row with him. Probably not a good thing. Man. Yeah, that's... Like, if good... I had my entire family, and I don't just mean my four brothers, I mean, I want all 36 of my cousins with me. I'm still not liking to try to fuck around with that row. <laughs> like, because you know Timmy's packing. I was and he's afraid. still the one you're not afraid of. I was 330 pounds then. I was big. Yeah. Was really big. But fuck, it doesn't matter how big you are when you got a piece. Yeah. So, like hey. I said, you probably had a gun on you, and you were still not as scary as the other guy sitting with you. Probably not. What fuck kind of green beer are you drinking? I didn't put it in this camera. Fuck off. It's St. Patrick's Day leftovers. Oh, my God. He's drinking like a Smirnoff ice or something like that. No. So, you know what? The fun thing is about this. You, Richard Lovekiss, Mike Gould, three of you sitting side by each. I ain't scared of the three of you motherfuckers at all. Because you're not there. You wouldn't be invited to Yeah, but you wouldn't be invited to an event like that. You're not good enough. Yeah, but maybe I'd be a fan. Yeah, but there's good a, there's enough a, to hang out with you, pricks. <laughs> nah, there's a, there a cage around us. They wouldn't let anybody near us. I'm just saying, outside of fucking that, uh, arm wrestling abilities and stuff, you know, who, why would anybody want to fuck around when it's you three dudes? Right? Like, yeah, you just don't look like the kind that you should try to test. They came after me a few minutes later. Like, this want, just doesn't make sense, but I know that I look at it a little differently now because my youngest brother, the Duckfoot, he's a big dude. He's a fucking ogre-looking motherfucker, and he's strong as fuck, right? And he doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't. Like, he, he doesn't know what fear is. He's not, he's not smart enough to comprehend fear. But he would never fuck around with you, and he was fucking afraid of my gold. He was also afraid of me the one night. That was funny. But I know how fucking scared I should be of you guys, but you're all just nice fucking people. You've never done anything. You've never done anything stupid to piss me off. I pissed you off plenty of times. All I do is say stupid shit to you, fuck. You've never pissed me off. You've never pissed me off. 
It's kind of like the people who in the bar who decide to go up to Haku and say, you're one of those fake wrestlers, aren't you? Note to self, try harder to piss Timmy off in the future. It ain't going to happen. Ah, uh, it's because you love me. Because God has, God has pity on retards. <laughs> that was a very Christian's Benny's voice thing of you to say. Thank you. Thank you. See, Timmy just loves me because it was the first time he ever got humped by a llama. What does getting humped by a llama got to do with Because I was wearing <laughs> bear pants, and when I moved around the outside of the pole, like armrest, like I moved all the way around the outside of the table to put my shoulder further in the way. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm getting humped by a llama. <laughs> that when you got beat by my fucking 13-year-old kid? Uh, he was 17, and I beat him. Okay. Maybe. So there. Maybe. Maybe. Right, we had this argument before. He was also 300 fucking plus pounds. He's a big fat You were like, no, he was 13. He was 240. And then Corey came on, and he was like, no, Dad, I was right. I was fucking 17, 330 fucking pounds, and he won. Could be. Could be. Don't be like that, Timmy. It you know how it goes. That was, that, was a, that was a fucked up tournament. Oh, my God. I don't even know how to get started on that. Fucking Craig Zubler just deciding not to show up because he found out I was getting paid more than him. Wait, wait, wait. How about the promoter didn't fucking show up? Yeah. So John Milne and I drove down together. John was supposed to pull Pete, and I was supposed to pull Craig. Pete didn't fucking show up to pull he John, and Craig didn't show up because I was getting paid more than him, and he was mad he about it. I got to piss showed. real bad. Pete showed up, you fuck. Not Milano, Pete Mills. Oh, the oh okay. Yeah, that, that could be true. That's how they fucking oh, ruined that's, that's how they ruined the original arm fighter, those two fucking assholes. It wasn't that an Igor tournament? Well, it was it was American Arm Fighter. But yeah. he picked the wrong guy he picked the wrong guys to promote the fucking thing. That was an Igor event. The winners there were supposed to move up to do the PM. Yeah, when, when your two fucking promoters fuck things up, what are you going to do? Uh, you know? I, they called me a fucking couple days before the tournament and had to, save, had to fucking save the tournament. The good thing my guy that, uh, my friend that I know that gave us the fucking casino, had the trophies left over for fucking another tournament. We wouldn't even have trophies for that tournament. Yeah, no, it's fucking awesome. Like, whenever Tim Bresnan showing up to fucking referee saves a tournament. Fuck me. Well, you realize I gave I gave all those guys the, the casinos. My friend is, is Indian. He had contact with all the casinos and was running the karate expos. I handed that fucking out, them assholes out on a fucking silver platter and he fucked it all up. It was sad. Fucking sad. It's your fault it was in the casino? Then you owe me 50 bucks because I got taken. No, I, I hand I hand them the contact. I turn the contacts over to them. They fucking, Igor picked the wrong fucking dudes. And he almost did it again when he wanted to pick the other little short fuck. Who's Dude that? Fucking, I ain't going to say. I want to hear. I can say. Because he won't, he won't oh, be on that one? Don't be on your show with me because he's a fucking puss. Oh, well, who's the pussy? Like, you're just talking about somebody, but, like, too pussy to even say. I'm not going to give him... I'm not going to give him views. Nobody watches this show anyway, Tim. I'm not going to give him any views anyway. <laughs> she, my, she, my son told me, good or bad, gives him views. I ain't going to give him views. All publicity is good publicity. Absolutely. He, he ain't getting any publicity from me. Except for the guys that say... Thumbtack match killed arm wrestling. We destroyed the sport. Oh, Were you there? <laughs> Were you there when Ron Bath lost his mind on fucking Uncle John? No, I missed that one. I was there when, I was there when he lost his mind on you. Ah, he wasn't that bad with me. He was bad enough. Well, I mean, he was fairly aggressive, but I mean, I simply asked him, like, are we elevating this, or are you just giving me your opinion? Like, what's going on, Ron? And he kind of just relaxed a bit. He's like, no, no, I, I don't want a problem. Just, I need to tell you my opinion. I'm like, okay. Then we should have a beer and talk about it on the show. 
and he's too tired tonight. He was coming, but he's like, man, it's been a rough one. We did a tour. I did a tour of uh, Dublin with him and his wife. But he fucking lost it at Uncle John. I don't want to go too far into that because I want to save it for next week when he comes on. That's but, sad when you show the show so down the fucking dump, you got to save shit. The fucking... Yeah. Why you got to save shit? Why just talk about it? Because it's more fun to talk about it when Ron's on. Okay. I mean, we can talk about it if you want. I just think it's more fun when okay. Ron's here. Because I don't need... Look, Ron had gotten into the whiskeys. So he didn't like the thumbtack match. Or maybe he did. Or maybe he got so fired up watching the thumbtack match, he accidentally drank too aggressively. But somehow he got very upset about it at the end of it and started threatening to slap the piss out of Uncle John. I missed that part. I didn't hear that part. Well, that's how it all started. Then he comes out. And him and Ange are walking out, and he sees me standing there. And I, he looks over at Ange, and he's like, well, I gave it to Uncle John. I got to say it to Evan, too. And he came right at me. and He was fucking lighting up pretty good. I'm like, holy fuck. Like, is this going to turn into a fucking problem? Because I do not want to have a problem with fucking Ron Bath. Right? Like, I don't want to get daboed in front of the world. Fuck. Life will kick your fucking ass. Oh, Angie, come on. I wouldn't doubt that girl. That girl's that girl put together pretty fucking... Yeah, that's a Canadian farm girl. I get it. But come too. on, Tim. Tim. What, Women don't fight men. Not in a real fight. Come on. I didn't say fighting a man. I'm just talking about fighting you. <laughs> Shut up, Roy. Fuck. Men have, men have traps. Men have traps. Yeah. And don't, take picture, and don't take pictures with transvestites. That's no, your shoulders. I don't have traps. I don't have any traps. I don't, what do you need traps for? To move your head? To pet squirrels? So, Roy, why do you take so much abuse from him? Uh, it's, heard- just, uh, it's just all been good fun. We're really good friends. I go hang out. Okay, Roy's not allowed talking like that. Like, I mean, I got enough of this shit. There's no talking like that. Fuck. Wait, wait. How do you? How do you? He's from Georgia. Yeah. He should be on Ron Bass side. Yeah, Ron Bass from Georgia. Yep. Even though he's from, he's from Wisconsin originally, he still sounds like he talks like he's from Wisconsin. Yeah, Man, I'm on Ron Bass' side. Fuck where you're from. from. Where he's from Alabama. He's from the same spot as Forrest Gump. Where he's from the no, same. Oh, Georgia, Georgia. No, Alabama. no, no. Roy grew Alabama. up, born and raised in Alabama. Yeah. And he had this high school bully come to try to give him a beat when he got home after work one day or after school. And then the bully came in, he saw Roy standing there, and he came running over, and he tried to give him a kick in the nuts and accidentally kicked his sister's chin, and then they had to move because of the whole embarrassing story. And now he's in Georgia. <laughs> is, that, is that true, Roy? 100% no. true. But Roy will tell you it happened to a friend of his or maybe his cousin. Yeah, his cousin or something. It's always I, I, don't even, I don't even like going to Alabama. Not anymore, because they all know the story. They were there. Fuck you know, off. Do you know why Georgia leans to the oh, west? So fresh. You know why Georgia leans to the west, beer man? No, but did you oh. know that that chin kick not only circumcised you, but it brought you right down to a solid two inches? Because Alabama Ooh. sucks. Oh, boy. Hope there's no one, anyone from Alabama in in the chat. Feel free to comment on that. And I'm gonna fucking send the clip of that to fucking Justin Bishop. I'm gonna delete everything that I was saying in it about Alabama people, though. Hey, and, uh, we're just gonna have what Roy was saying about Alabama, and Bishop gonna come whoop your ass. The whole family will come whoop that ass. Did you know? That... Go ahead, Tim. Go ahead, Tim. Don't ever <laughs> let Roy talk if you have the choice. There's more fucking bishops in Alabama than there is fucking Borgoyans in the valley. Holy shit. Yeah. There is fucking, there's like, they, they have the whole side of the fucking show we're at with doing tournaments. This is, this, <laughs> but you probably shit. get along with Roy outside of him being a dipshit on the show. 
because he could probably hit all of those bishops from where he sits right now with his fucking rifles. That's one thing I'll give Roy. He can shoot. Roy, give us a desk pop. He fucking, he, he Roy, give us a desk pop. pop. No, I'm done with that. I still got bullet fragments stuck in the wall over there. What's a Roy, few more? Roy, Roy give us a desk pop. Roy's, Roy's stuff is all airsoft. It's not even real. <laughs> I, I, check, I looked at some of his stuff on Instagram. And it's all just airsoft. Hey, all right, Timmy, give that. us a desk pop. That's a Ruger 1911. 45, right? Exactly. I told you, one. Timmy. Fucking Roy knows his guns. He's good with them. Exactly. Um, B and I have to play stupid when it comes to them because we're not allowed to know. Yeah, we're not even I, allowed to. Know, I, we're not even allowed to read about them here. Fuck. Listen, if it was the, the last fucking podcast I was on, I hadn't put my guns away. They're all over the fucking place in there. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. Timmy. That was back. Whatever. I gave a fuck. What's that? I do not give a fuck anymore. You could give us a death pop right now. Fire one off right where you are. It's a 45, not a 22. It's not an answer. <laughs> I thought oh, you were more manly than Roy whenever you had a 45 and he only had a 22. I can the hole in my fucking wall. Man, get some phone books. Set them up. Fuck, 45 goes through the phone books. What do you what, what do you got in there? What do you got? Dude? You got FMJs. You got some green tips, red tips, blue tips. What are you working with? Is that hydroshocks? Are they red tips? Forty-four mag hydroshocks. Oh, there you go. Look, like uh, look at that! It's like another point for Roy. There you go. Man, if they would have asked any fucking type of gun or ammo related questions. Roy oh, we scored a zero on trivia night. <laughs> there we go, Roy. Oh yeah. yeah what is it? There you go. Uh that that looks like a two two three. Or five five, five, five six. six. Uh, five, yeah, five, six. That was about, that's that's a five is, is that a five five seven? Six. No, five, five, that, six? that's a NATO five five six. Okay, that looks like a forty cal, forty Smith and Wesson. What? Oh shit. Uh Oh, that's a uh under shot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that is uh either a thirty that thirty eight special. Either, yeah, thirty eight special, not three fifty seven. Thanks. Yeah, thirty eight special. Timmy, fucking fuck him up on one of these so I can laugh and call him a dumbass. I'm trying, I'm trying to pull a shot of my ass up here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. Know. I got one more. Hey, wait a little further, a little more. There you go. Ooh, ooh, a twenty-two Hornet. Motherfucker, is he good? <laughs> Timmy, I told you you would like Roy if he wasn't such a dipshit on the show. Twenty-two Hornet. Twenty-two Hornet's a classic. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, that's uh, that's three hundred blackout. Motherfucker! Yeah, what kind? Uh, that's a Hornady. That's a that's a subsonic. Yeah, Hornady, right? No, it's Icon or some shit. Huh? Okay. Ah, Roy, you fucking idiot. Oh, yeah, okay, it's made by, yeah, AAC. Yeah, oh, Roy, good. you fucking idiot. No, no, no. You don't I, even I, know what you're talking about. No, no, but that's the a Hornady. Hornady. I red dot. No, he's I the Hornady red dot's a good I round. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that's a Hornady bullet, though. The projectile with the red tip is a It probably bullet. is. I got yeah. that because they fucking, uh, you can't, Hornady you can't. Red dot's good. It's around a fucking 5.56 five, that, that fucking hypersonic. Fucking well, Roy's about to fill his own sock can here. You, uh, can you guys get RIP rounds out there? Get anything yeah. I want. Yeah. 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 The RIPs, the RIPs are sick. They, they, to, they both live in the southern states. What do you mean? Can they get? They get well, them you to say, Can you get whatever the fuck you're about to fill in the blank with? It's a yes. They give them to us for free. We don't even have to buy them. Man, you get whatever that was that you just said. You get it for free when you open a bank account in half of these fucking states. And you see that it's one of those uh, inceptors. It's like a propeller. It looks yeah, like a, yeah. It's, it's not a hollow point. It's like a boat propeller. Those are those are fucking badass. Roy, you ever fire off those fucking um, 
Dragon's breaths. Uh, I've seen I've, I've I've seen it done out of a shotgun. Yeah, they're not legal here. This is cool, but they're what? fucking awesome because you can shoot and cook your partridge at the same time. Yeah, saw that. You realize, you realize that the gun show I can buy I can buy a grenade launcher to go on the bottom of my rifle. I can buy a flamethrower to go on the bottom of my rifle. Yeah, you can buy those uh, 40 millimeter dummy like practice with chalk on them where you can see where you're hitting. Those are the grenades. We, we can buy we can buy the flare rounds too. Yeah. Oh, you know, Timmy, the- not to uh break up the brome heads you guys got growing, although I really do enjoy breaking that up because I don't want anybody to actually like Roy. That's my Roy, so okay. relax. Um, but there was a comment I wanted to point out here from the turd burglar that says that Travis is Tim's daddy. Oh, shit. yeah, when I was a fucking novice. So, when you were a novice, you called Travis daddy? No, he fucking said that. I don't know. I was in, I was in about six months, I, I took second place in national championship to behind Travis. Travis. Yeah, and you called him daddy. I, no, he said, he said, who's your daddy? And did you say you are? But then if you, if you, the last time I pulled Travis, you can hear my kid in the background as I'm, I'm drilling Travis with a broken finger. I had a broken middle finger. I still drilled him. So you myself. drilled Travis with your middle finger. This sounds like stepdaddy porn. Uh-oh. Oh, it's all busted up. Oh, <laughs> I, broke, I broke my finger pulling Travis. Again. And then I beat him. I beat him with a broken finger. I beat Mike Gould with a broken arm. How hard is it to beat a guy with a broken arm? He broke my arm. Oh, he broke your arm. Mike Gould broke my arm. Well, I mean, I broke my arm, I guess. Whatever. My arm, it, it, it fractured lengthwise through the bone. Like, it didn't blow apart where I needed surgery. Like, it just cracked the bone. It's still a broken arm, though. The bone's broken. And it just hurt a lot. And I kept training, whatever, because I had another tournament to go to in six weeks. And I went to Rib Fest. And that's where I got my very first win on Mike Gould was with a broken arm that Mike had broken six weeks prior to that. But BLM fractured his elbow, didn't he? Oh, man. The first <laughs> round. Multiple fractures of his elbow joint and a complete <laughs> rupture of his UCL. Kid. Well, he's fucked. And then he still fought and won two rounds. Yeah, because Bogdan fucking sucks. Yeah, Bogdan's a fucking bit of a bitch. But, you know, Mobile Hill is another guy that got a little touch of the tism. You know, multiple fractures of the elbow, ruptured UCL, and Get still fucking pulls. And he didn't tell. B and I were in his corner, right? He didn't tell either of us a goddamn word about it until afterwards. Because he knew I probably would have thrown the towel on him, right? Look, you're a kid. You're fucking 27 years old. Fucking it up worse is not worth it. Let's get it fixed up. Let's get you back as soon as we can. I got to take a piss. Right? And he said, fuck that. I'm not telling these pricks. I'm fucking going for it. Sometimes you're you're too tough for your own good. Say that about Evans. Uh, so he, he only was just telling me that like he was getting me to work like near his elbow and his pronator like a bit more than other things, but that was that was it. You could see him after the first round; he was shaking his arm out like this. I mean, yeah, but so- everybody shakes their arm out. It's you get the blood fucking move and get rid of it, any fucking pump. Like you try to get blood going, move it around. You know, like he had a look on his face; it was a little different. Yeah, he did. Uh, now, so if you knew fun, fucking Mobile Hill, like Ask B, we know him. Mobile Hill's always got that same fucking dumb look on his face when he's arm wrestling. He is not thinking about anything else but that match. Like, it doesn't change. It's always the same. He's a, he's a tough son of a bitch. I know that. He's tough. Dude. He is- I was surprised. I was I was surprised to see him lose round one, but now we know why because he fucking he broke his shit, you know. Yeah. Well, on the other side of things, you got to give 
a little bit of credit to the fucking pussy. Um, he came out of hard and fast, and he caused that break. Because Mulvaney yeah, he- was a strong motherfucker that can arm wrestle, and if Bogdan wasn't strong, his arm wouldn't have broke. Right. So yeah, he went, you got to give a little he, bit to he, that fucking guy. He was, press, he, he was floppers pressing every single round. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, that press. There's a lot of pressure behind a press like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They weren't stopping him from putting his shoulder on it either, were they? Oh, dude, his fucking shoulder was like, I lost it. That, that's why my voice is still gone. It's from yelling shoulder, shoulder, shoulder every fucking round. It was. Yeah. Uh, no, B, I get your feelings, man. I still can't talk right, right yeah, now. Yeah, like, no, legit. Do you remember how bad my voice was the next day because of that round? Mine's, mine's still. Like I said, my voice Fuck. is still. Yeah. Keep, Either keep, way, keep, keep, keep. I was impressed with the way he fought, especially considering that he knew his arm was that fucked. Dude, I have never fucking seen anything like that. The next day when he's telling me about it, he didn't even tell me that night when we were all drinking, unless he did, I was just wasted and forget. The next day when he tells me about it, I grab his arm, hold his elbow, and you can feel. It's like the fucking joint is fucking eight sizes too big. and It's like the two sections of arm are not even barely attached. It's just the skin holding them there. It's like there was so much fucking movement. It was Fucked. He definitely needs surgery. He's already talked to the surgeon. He's going to be getting it fixed up like real soon. But that was. It's impressive. Both one that that little fucking stoika cunt was strong enough to break it. And two that that prick fucking pulled fucking five more rounds, six more rounds like that. Yeah, on his elbow, all, all right on the, all on his fucking elbows. Yeah. Every single fucking time. But the first time Mulville ever got like a legitimate injury, not just gets hurt. Like we're always hurt. It's arm wrestling. Yeah. Tim, you've been arm wrestling longer than I have. The first time you arm wrestle, you're healthy. As soon as you pick up your first little minor injury, you have never been 100% since. Like that's just how it goes. There's always something wrong. Brachial radialis sucked fucking about six months ago. Yeah, there's always something that's not, you're never 100%. Except for Devin right now. Devin right now has no pain. uh, That's because he's high as fuck. But there's always something wrong for everybody all the time. And, you know, we don't make excuses. Oh, this was wrong. This was wrong. Like, Okay, maybe it was, but we took the match, we arm wrestled. You don't complain about this is why I lost. We knew that that was a risk going into it. We thought we could still do it without that, whatever. Um, but nobody is ever 100%. That's just a fucking fact. Um, first time Mobile ever got hurt was at the MGC 2014. And he was pulling in the amateur division. He placed second to John Terrian in the 187-pound class. Wow. And they went hook, Mulvihill held, whatever. The match ended in a foul. They restart, and Mulvihill just got drilled. I didn't know that his elbow had completely fucking torn the ligaments on the inside during that first round of the hook, and he never told me. And then after, like, a month of training after we get home, and I'm like, dude, what the fuck is going on with your arm? Like... You don't arm wrestle the same anymore. You just like let things go, but like just nothing makes sense because he would never wince, he would never yelp, and he would never tell you that it hurt. And so I had to pull him aside. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like, you're arm wrestling all fucking out of sorts. What the fuck, man? He's like, oh, well, in that match against John Terry and the MGC, like, I heard it felt like an elastic tore in my elbow. And I heard the pop, and it just hurts. I can't go that way anymore. I'm like, why are you waiting over a month to fucking tell your coach that your arm is fucked in this way? So we haven't been working on rehab for it. We haven't been trying to address what the problem is. We're not trying to work around it and keep it safe, let it heal. Like, nothing. You need to tell me this shit so that we know. He's like, I don't know. I just didn't want to complain. You know, he <laughs> is 
far fucking tougher than he should be for his own good. Yeah. And it does not help when you are that stubborn slash tough. It does not help you sometimes. No. Honestly, like I would love to see like Brendan healthy at like his like what his peak can be because I fucking love watching that guy arm wrestle and like the top version of him is fucking dangerous. Like dangerous. But Mobile. Dude, he is a very, very unique arm wrestler. Oh, man, like, man. Fuck, I love so watching that guy arm wrestle. You got guys like Tim Bresden. He hates the King's move, but he's like two shades of shit off of a King's move in every match. <laughs> right? Like, he's Tim arm wrestles with an open top roll. The difference is, is that Tim doesn't lay down. Right? But he doesn't have to because his arm doesn't fucking open. So, and he's fat, so he can't really move that far. Right? This is as far as he goes. And then once it gets open to that far, he turns over and applies a fuck ton of rotation and starts working his way back. Tim, am I wrong? Is that how you arm wrestle? Yes or no? I'm old and getting weak. When you were young and strong, you were young and strong because that's the fucking one spot that you were just fucking world class with. And I'm not knocking on much. I don't hate it. I fucking love it. Great. Whatever gets you the win, do it. But you open with a real wide open bicep style and then rely on a ton of rotation yep. as it gets low. It's literally two shades of shit off of a king's move, though. Uh, I wouldn't call it a king's move. Right, you don't call it a king's move, but it actually is very close to a king's move. The, the king's move is literally based on like a chessboard. And the king, like when you're down to the king, it's like all or nothing. That's it. That, this is all we got. And you don't have options to transition into a press or a hook or a traditional top roll. You're out here and you've got your rotation and the outside of your arm. That's where you are. You you have no other options. That's why it's called the king's move because it's very end. So when people are like doing that same type of move, but they still have these transitional abilities, I like to call it a queen's move because the queen can do whatever the fuck she wants. Either way, you're not far off of a king's move. Just you don't do the whole laying down open arm thing that causes fouls and people are pissed off about, right? You're still standing up, arm wrestling and fighting like a man. But everybody's got their own styles. Mulva Hill can arm wrestle everywhere, but his, I don't know where his top spot is. It's either buried all the way in, he buries his putting spot everything on his frame, yeah. or he's still using a fuck ton of elbow joint committal, but he's like laying back with a fuck ton of height. It's just a weird ability for somebody to open their arm that much and be able to keep a full high post. Like, well, also his ability of uh, rated the pin pad when he's on nothing but his pronation and, and a bit in his bite, you know, he's got his, he's got some hand control and some pronation, but you can get me slammed right there at the pad. He's got that stop, stop. And then the second you take off juice a bit, he's, he's gaining height again now and he's fucking turning it back over. That's when he jumps right into that fucking open bicep straight post, right? Yeah. But the fun thing is when he gets all the way open and he's just relying on some pronation and anything else he could fucking work with, like he's looking for everything. He yeah. doesn't train that way at all, ever. That is just him being a stubborn motherfucker and he just refuses to concede that last quarter inch. Like, that's just that the amount of fight that that dog has in him. Like, he just loves to fucking arm wrestle, and he wants to win so fucking bad that he just refuses to allow the other like, to like, like a lemon, a lemon that's, like, a bit in shape and motivated. Like, example, like the lemon that showed up at Snake River. You know what I mean? Like, it was a bad day to be in front of him. Like, you know, if you're in front of lemon that day in fucking Snake River, you were getting fucking... You're getting fucked up. Oh, man. I'm pretty sure that was an induced lemon. I think he was on, like, meth or something, because I've never <laughs> seen that fucking thing before, man. He was, he was firing off, he drilling was Porky, 
Like it was a joke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I know how good the kid is. Everybody, the, the East Coast, the West Coast, the Ontario, everyone fuck. Fuck up. He was flexing on people, and Devin wouldn't even practice pull with him that day. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay. Arm wrestling. Does Jeff make you a good arm wrestler? <laughs> I've never done meth and arm wrestled. I've done meth and I've arm wrestled, but I've never, you know. I mean, I'd say it's probably good. Like if you're within that first 24 to 48 hours of no sleep, it's probably good. But if you're on that back end of like the 72 plus, probably getting a little shifty and squirmy. Like, I mean, I'm not talking smoking and injecting, just a little sniff. Like, <laughs> fuck, you're getting all crazy going right to extremes. And look, when I say I've done meth, it wasn't for recreational purposes. It was, I used methamphetamines as a tool. Um, I was young, when and I was really excited with, for Christmas, but it was still six trainees. months away, and I didn't want to have to sleep another 887 times, so I just took a fuckload of meth, and I only needed to take, like, four and a half sleeps, and then Santa Bro. came. Bro, yeah. honestly... Honestly, fuck meth. Fuck meth. Like I got, man, I got some stuff. We're gonna have an interesting summer, Coachy. Remember, remember those, remember those rare batch of. This is probably like, not a good idea to talk about. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that rare batch of the old birthday mushies that that that, that we had. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got like the new version of those, and they look even fucking crazier. Like it, like these things look fucked. All right, so. Drugs are bad. We okay. don't joke about these things. All of these things that we say are not real. We are playing characters. But for scientific purposes, I am willing to actually eat mushrooms so people can see what the effects are. On what? I got mushrooms growing all over my farm. Oh, of course. I mean, if you if, if you got cows around and a couple spores, you're getting them by the fucking garbage bag. Kick, kick, kick any dried up pile of cow shit. You're going to have yourself some fucking treats. I got a question. I have an arm wrestling I have an arm wrestling question. Tim, you have arm wrestled both of them. Who's your, who do you, what do you think about the Devin LeVon match? Who's going to win? I think LeVon's going to win. You think LeVon's going to beat him? The only, way, the only way I can see Devin winning is if LeVon's wrist is not back to 100%. Or he, he got injured. I'm telling you, that guy is that. I, I, not that I don't have faith in Devin, because I know Devin, Devin's a great arm wrestler. I just, I just know what that motherfucker feels like. He's like hitting a brick fucking wall. Do you he, think if do you think if Devin stops the match for ten seconds or more, he can win the whole thing? If he stops the match for ten seconds, what a stupid question. If Devin stops a match for ten seconds or more with anybody, he can win for sure. Oh, he's not that he will, but he can. Stops the match. He's always in the best place. Levon I mean, does not do well in matches that stop. No, and Devin does. No, that no, is no. literally Devin's goal when the ref yells "go." It's I think he's a match stop. I think Devin's no, going to hang him up. You know they say there's no such thing as a stupid question. They've never yeah. talked to you. Shut up, Roy. So instead of you taking over my goddamn show and asking questions because you want to, how about? You shut up and stop making friends with my Timmy. Okay? This is my, this is my you show. You can answer the question. How do you think? Who's going to go? go? Judging, like, and keep in mind, right? Like, this is just me doing a bit of arm wrestling math. Like, I mean, the Devin match, he did get a bit of bite in the first round. He got injured round two. We'll never know. In the following match, when he had a match with Hermes, Hermes was able to hang him up and I mean, I know he didn't lose getting his arm pinned. He lost on fucking fouls because he doesn't want to lose all his Georgian riches and shit like that. Not even fouls. He didn't go to the table. Yeah, so, like, fucking, I don't know, man. I know the Devin that's, I know the monster that is Devin that's walking around now. If I think if LeVon's came down just a fucking notch, I know Devin's came farther on that gap and, I think I don't know, man. I think I think he's gonna fucking do it. Like just just judging, especially based on what I see in Ermi's do with them. Like that just showed that Ermi's match showed me that okay, he's not the invis the invincible mountain. You know what I mean? Like there he does bleed like all of us fucking 
regular men. And I think him just showing that little bit of weakness is all Devin needed to fucking see to click in his brain. Like, I just got to get stronger and fuck him up. So I agree with a lot of what you said, but I disagree with, like, the rest of it. Because Ernie's showing us that LeVon is uh, human, is good. It gives everybody a bit of confidence that Devin might be able to do it because... If he got that tired with Hermes and Devin fucking train wrecked Hermes, okay. But also, I think LeVon has seen that, and he will have worked to correct that issue, knowing he's going to pull Devin, and you cannot show up and get tired like that with well, Devin. The guy's, being, the guy's patient zero for fucking a bacteria that hangs out in your system over the course of a year and makes your fucking bone stronger and shit, like... I have no idea what any of that means, but... You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, if Devin was a little bit stronger the first time and not torn, I think he would have done it that time. And I like betting against Devin if I could see a way. You know, I don't do it often because, fuck, it's really hard to fucking honestly say Devin's not going to win a match most of the time. But I did pick LeVon to win last time even though I didn't want him to. And then watching it, after watching round one, I thought Devin might have fucking, we was about to pull it off. I was like, holy fuck. Really that well. son of a bitch might fucking do this. The whole club went nuts on round one. We all, we all, what did you see in round one? A stop. He stopped, at the pin yeah, he stopped him. He stopped him. Where did he, it, 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 it hesitated for, uh, Fucking microsecond before he pinned it. <laughs> Second and a half, Tim. Watch it again. It stopped. Full stop. LeVon had to come up a bit. Oh, my God. Go Play it. Play the fucking video. I don't know how to do that. Of course right. you don't. Roy, play the video. Roy, you queue it up, and I'll give you access to play. Oh, but, fuck. Tim, I'm telling you, it was a hard stop. And nobody thought Devin was going to get a hard stop until he had, like, three rounds of tiring him out first. Like, do you remember the, the push car match against Devin? What? The left hand. I was hand. there. I was there. Yeah. Devin gets drilled. Slips late, goes straps. Devin gets drilled. They go again round two. Devin gets drilled, but slips late, goes straps. Devin fucking way down. Gets a full hard stop. And then runs over Pushkar from there. Right? Once Devin gets that stop and people start getting tired and Devin doesn't, then when Devin gets that hard stop, generally it becomes bad for the other guy. What? You're acting like, I don't think it was a hard stop. It was a hard stop. Oh, God. Absolutely. Absolutely. It wasn't a hesitation, it was a hard stop. Absolutely not. (laughs) <laughs> and that happened, it happened in round one. Kevin's allowed to lose the next two. And if he gets a little bit more stop purchase on each round, it's not out of the question to think that by round fucking four, Devin's going <laughs> to fucking get a even better stop, move into position, and start winning and win after that. That's kind of Devin's yeah. long game plan for every match. Anyways, Tim, while Roy's queuing this up, I'm going to finish my view on what I'm seeing coming up in the future match. LeVon, I think he would have corrected this fucking issue and not show up the way he did against Hermes, knowing that that can happen, especially pulling a guy like Devin. For one. Two, LeVon's wrist, is it back to 100? Because it had better be if he wants to win. 99 is not going to do it. He might want to go to 105 of what he was last time because Devin's coming in better this time than he was last time. I know that. And also, uh, if Devin's arm didn't blow, who knows? Now, you can't just say Devin's arm just let go, whatever. LeVon very well could have been the one to cause his arm to explode like that, that little, that tire, because he made an adjustment knowing that Devin's going to do this. Okay, well, I'm going to do this to counteract that. And he drilled straight through it. And now Devin can't. I'm not saying LeVon's a bad arm wrestler. 
he may very well have made the adjustment that caused the injury, not a freak accident, in which case yeah. that's the end of it, right? Yeah. Devin yeah. might not have gotten yeah. another stop ever again because Levon was able to adjust. We don't know. We never will. But right. Devin, yes, we'll find I know out. this, he's a fucking crazy motherfucker. Like, he's fucking insane. His brain is not normal. Like, uh, well, nobody on this show is normal, but there's a lot of people in the world that aren't like us that are normal, and his brain don't work like theirs. He's fucking, he gets tunnel vision, <laughs> hyper-focused on a goal, and he knows what he needs to do to get there, and I promise you, that dude doesn't show up knowing what's needed to get there without doing everything he can to get there. Yeah, well, and if Levon has not come back to 100%, he's fucked. Oh, definitely. And just if he got back to 100%, he still might be fucked because Devin's made increases and he knows what he's doing. And Tim, you can't argue. Devin's IQ and arm wrestling. If Levon shows up the exact same as he did last time, you think he's going to win? Look, Devin okay. wouldn't have taken another match with him. When he lost, he said, I'm not looking to do it again. Like, that's the goddamn man and by a long shot. Why would Devin take it again? Unless he's, he's so assessed everything that he would need to do and he thinks he's capable. <laughs> Glad we're taking it. Hey, here's Maybe. the other here's here's a very interesting thing Maybe I'm looking forward to. Is if Levon says, okay, I gotta have better endurance, I'm gonna show up 30 or 40 pounds lighter, but then is he giving up that max strength? I mean, like Levon's gotta decide, does he wanna <laughs> get you up lighter? You don't think it matters? No, it matters. He's not gonna jump lighter. He did that one time. I'm not gonna do it again. Who did he do that against? Uh, Vitaly. He showed him three three seventy or three sixty five. After being four hundred pounds for the whole top eight, and Vitaly slowed him down a little bit. I don't he know didn't. if it's the weight, the strength. I mean, that dude is strong as fuck at three seventy five or four twenty. Like, come on. Jesus yeah, but there's, Christ, a like, there's still a difference. Those are fake numbers for the weight of a human being that's in shape. God damn it. If you're strong enough, endurance is not important. Right. I just like watching these metahumans fucking fight each other. Like Levon, Devin, like, like Vitaly. You know, like, these guys are like different kind of built, you know, and to see them on that on that fucking super high level, it's it's it's, it's fun to watch in the sport. And like we're lucky that we have guys like this and we're actually we're we're discovering people more and more of these crazy fucking strength guys and starting to teach them how to arm wrestle and shit. Like so you know what's funny about that running. comment B? Well, so you know, it used to be one of those meta humans, like six two, three fifty, whoa kicking a fucking basketball net. And um, I know you didn't mean it this way, but I'm going to highlight it. Uh, Tim's not like that anymore, the old fat bitch. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, Mr. Beer, man. I'm not sure what you just said, but look, I will talk as tough as I want when you're 4,000 miles away. Travis. <laughs> oh, God, he called you Travis. I'm going to go take a piss and think about this because I'm not sure if I want to say what I want to say right now. Evan's putting words in my mouth to fucking slight Tim, but we're, we're all I not going for that malarkey. Anyways, you know, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I love Tim. He's an arm wrestling legend. Nobody shall say anything bad about Tim. <sighs> no, of course not. I told I, think I told him I told him when I was when I met him in person. One of my favorite matches that I see it is when he pulled Gennady and he was fucking like like that that top roll is just fucking sick. You know what I mean? Like like he had to go to that he had to go to that fucking greasy press there to fucking to, to get some, to get anything done. But, yeah, that, that to me is like that to me is like a. 
like like how he top rolls and how like Devin and Brendan, that's like if there's there's certain top rolls that got their own sauce to it, you know what I mean? And that are fucking really nice to watch. And they like said that with that 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 fucking that match is uh, I remember like it's one of my favorite, you know. So a good match. So here's what I decided I'm gonna do about that. <clears throat> about what? You call me Travis. <laughs> I've said a lot of rude things to a lot of people in my life, but I've never done nothing like that, Timmy. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore it like a fucking pussy. Because Tim President is actually a terrifying human being to actually, you know, lip off at. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just ignore it like it never happened. And then I'll probably make like passive aggressive comments like, hey, Tim, remember when you were good at arm wrestling like a long fucking time ago? Like back when Roy was a kid? Oh, man. Hey, have you ever ranked in the top 10 in the world? Hey, Tim, have you ever not, been not, good? Not, have you ever been ranked in the top 10 in the world? Tim, you only got ranked at the top 10 because you were giving fucking Igor hand jobs to your left hand. Oh, you're right. You're right. What? You're right. You're right. You're right. Oh man, you're breaking up real bad. It's way more fun to do this shit talking thing if I can understand what you're saying. I actually, I actually enjoyed a lot of those matches, the, the top eight matches. It was, it was, it was a good show. Hey, have you ever been ranked top ten in the world, Damian? No, but I've never given Igor a hand job with my left hand. Maybe if I get some baggery, he'd be ranked up there, but not in our Oh, man, I got to have made the top 10 in scumbaggery. Did you not see how early I went? <laughs> oh, that, was, that, was, that was fucking, I laughed really hard. Like, if you listen to the audio, you'll for sure hear my laugh over the entire stadium when you fucking I, belted him. The, the beginning battle. of the match, there was, I, think, I can't remember <laughs> what you yelled at the beginning. Uh, fuck. Was it Let's Go or some shit? No, no, no. It was something about being an incredible amount of fucking douchebag. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was very fucking specific. No, so it was... <laughs> fuck. Uh, and after we listened to it, I'm all fucking hammered. I actually, <laughs> I accidentally got drunk at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon today. So... And that's from what other day? But if anybody that has armgods.com They've signed up for the membership, which you fucking all four of you motherfuckers still watching better have. <laughs> um, somebody pull up the beginning of that. Listen to whatever was being yelled out of the crowd. Because I really enjoyed it. Some greasy shit. Yeah, it was like <sighs> I can't even fucking Think of something similar, like be unnecessarily fucking stupid. <laughs> like it was just a very specific thing that I just really appreciated because it fit so well. And I don't know if it was you that yelled it, but somebody yelled something that was like, that's exactly what I was thinking when I got to the table. Allegedly. <coughs> oh, for fuck's sakes. <coughs> Somebody get Captain Obvious out of this fucking channel. What's I don't want to hear no thing? bullshit about being under investigation by the ethics committee. Fuck. Oh, man. It Again? happened in Ireland. That's like international waters. The Canadian um, ethics committee of Ryan Espy does not have jurisdiction. Yes, Espy will always get you. Tim President, have you ever pulled by an SP? There's no power in Valhalla. There's no power of the ethics committee in Valhalla. I have pulled by an SP. You have? I definitely have. Did you win? Of course I did. Why do you say it so nonchalant? Like, of course I did. Because he's Canadian. He's Canadian. I beat every Canadian you guys put out there. When have you ever beat Devin? Uh, MLA? Didn't happen. Devin won that match. Yeah. No, Devin didn't win. Devin won the match two weeks before elbow surgery. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Is there? Did I say anything infactual there? It was two weeks before a major elbow surgery that was already scheduled. Yes or no? 
Dude, you're cutting out cut cut real cut. bad. I didn't hear a word. You got to fix. That's busted. It's not in time. <laughs> okay, when you sit back and you don't like sit forward and yell, it's not bad. So you okay. just talk slower, okay, so, even so though you're. I not Nope. Uh, you, you, you know. No, no, I just didn't get what you're saying. I, I'm not fucking around. Roy, yeah, fuck yeah. me up. I I really you. I'm done. I'm done. I, I heard that. I'm done. <laughs> okay, so my rip is fucked up. No, oh, that's that way good. better. That's real good. That's way better. That's Please. way better. So, anyways, so he told me when we were, when he pulled push guard that his elbow was fucked up after I pulled him. Why in God's why in God's green earth would the number one guy pull the number seven guy knowing he's got a fucked up elbow? Because he was like, Ian, I know we're friends and this is a big fucking deal there for you. Go. You're trying to launch there a promotion. I don't really go. want to pull. And Ian's like, Devin, please, it's a big favor to me. I will give you four hand jobs and three blow jobs if you do it. And then Devin's like, you know what? Fuck yeah. it. It's Tim Bresden. I can beat that fucking bum with a broken elbow. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> so only the end of that conversation is real. Well, anyways, it put me up to fourth in the world when I fucking... He only pinned me one out of seven times. So... The problem is, is that Devin's Canadian elbow was so bad... Canadian Even though he was race. still ranked number one, he actually oh, should have been like thirty fifth because there were thirty four guys that would have beaten him. So you go to fourth okay. is weird because you should have been thirty sixth. Okay, well maybe if he'd arm wrestled back then to hold his first spot, maybe he would. Dude, I don't know if you've seen this version of the video, but you guys went seven rounds, right? Yep. After round six, Devin walks to the corner. And you can see John Milne over there and Jeff. And uh, freezing up. I can't hear you. And Devin just is like, dude. I'm glad I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You You're freezing up on my side. No, no, he's freezing up. No. He's freezing up. It's just him. I can, see, I can see Big B, but I can't see you. Yeah. It looks like he's double fisting a big fucking cock right now. And then his screenshot there. Transvestite. Beer Man does yeah. BBC porn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. He's got um, an alley. Can you guys hear me now or not? Yeah. I, can hear you now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't tell you. Uh, hear me now. Hear you now. Yeah, you yeah. Hear you now. Go, Beer Man. Say, go. Say it quick. Go, Beer Man. Go, okay. Beer Man. Go. So when Devin went to that corner, it's just rubbing his arm. <laughs> uh -oh. You know it's bullshit because he keeps freezing up. God, Devin say, God is punishing him because he's Peter. lying. Because he's lying. Uh oh. So, so. Oh, I'm not. It's good. It's good, buddy. It's Tim. Good, it's good, Tim. Yes. This, yes. Evan. <laughs> Evan. <laughs> Evan. Evan, you're going to invite me to your next wedding in Ireland? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Zing. Evan. <laughs> It looks, like looks like he's, like he's holding an invisible beer this time. It looks like there should be a beer in his hand, but there isn't. No, he's reaching for BBC. <laughs> oh, man. He's not done. <laughs> he's not done. Well, see, that's like it's bullshit because God is punishing him right now for lying. Oh, boy. He's back. He's back, I think. Yeah. Am I actually back? Yeah. Not really. Right now, yeah. you're still a little, still a little zesty, but... Uh, Hold on, I just switched my internet connection. Let me know. It's been, it's hard, okay. to, it's been hard to fuck up because my earpiece is out of out of fucking battery. Oh man, we hear you real good right now, but can you hear me? I'm dying, though. Yeah, I can hear you. Hear you. Okay, so when Devin went to the corner and Slater 
is rubbing his arm. What you can hear Devin saying in this fucking off angle video is, I don't know if I can do this. I've got no options left. I'm burying it. I'm going all the way in. If my arm is ever going to break in a match, it's going to be right now. It's my only option. <laughs> he had every intention of risking breaking his arm in that last round against you. Because he, he had of, no he other of, options. He ran out of favors from the referees. He got four fucking, four fucking elbow fouls on the pin from the <laughs> referees. So he ran out of that option. I pinned him on the other two options, so I mean, there's no more options. Man, I would love to see you go and tell the referee that was calling that to his face when he was in his prime that you think he's a fucking making shit up, no integrity cunt. I don't think he made it up. I think he, I think he really thought that's what happened, but it's not what happened. Well, I don't think man, he... so you're saying the same thing about Earl that I say about you. <laughs> What's that? What's fucking that? shitty referee, but honest. He's well, just really that bad. Last Earl, time Earl, I read the last time I referenced you, you said you said how fucking why I was being so strict with you. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, because you're being because you're being a puke the time I didn't fucking I was literally <laughs> trying to let the other guy win and you fucked him over. You were cheating. <laughs> I was trying to let him win. You cheat. You lying sack of shit. You ain't never let nobody win in your the life. The last time you refereed a match of mine was against Zach Lee. He was a 176 yep. pound dude that I was yep. rolling over like a fucking joke. And I was and trying won. to fucking turn it into a match that he could win because I like being the guy that's losing all the time right now. He, and I he, thought he, it was funny. He did and lose. you fucking let me win even though I'm trying to let him win. Fuck. Was that a, was that after the Roger match? Yes. Now Roger beat me for real, but my arm was fucked. Zach, no, I'm like, oh my god, that must be a Canadian thing. If you if you lose, your arm is fucked. <laughs> it's, no, it's no, no. Universal, I say. It's not. no, my arm was fucked against Roger, and I told okay. everybody that when I said yes to the match. I'm like, dude. I don't have a hand. Like, I tore my wrist with Paul. It was all fucked up. I am not ready to go. Why'd you take it? But if you want me to do it, I'll show up and do it anyways. It's just, I'm not 100%, not close. And then I just got thrown into the match with Zach because oh, his you, guy didn't show up. You're, you're fucking, you're the one that's talking about us not crying like little babies about being hurt. And there you go crying like little babies about being hurt. No, no, no. I said we don't do it afterwards. I did it before. <laughs> I did said, look, I'm not going to win the match. Roger's going to beat me. I'm fucked up. Look, me, you were on the show the whole time. You know, goddamn well uh, that I was being honest. And everybody's like, oh, Evan, with that high hooker fuckery, he's just uh, trying to fuck with Roger, trying to get him to not train hard or something. Like, no, I was being fucking serious. My wrist was fucked up. I was not 100%. So, so, but, uh, now, okay. what? now uh, what? Now what? Now what? I, I have no more words. Yeah, well, none I, of your I, words were any good in the beginning. I have no more words. Why do your glasses turn me on? Because maybe you're looking for a new wife? No. Nope. Again? Nope. Okay. I think it's the hairline. I always had a thing for George Costanza, you know? It's way, it's way back here. Why are you getting bald? I don't know. Because that's fucking way for golf the last few years. It's funny. Tim Bresnan at 65 is balding. I stopped being able to say balding at like 27. No, balding is a thing of the past. It's all gone. We're bald now. Yeah, it's present tense. <laughs> Anyways... Tim, I would just like to say you were never actually good at arm wrestling. No, you're right. I must not have been. Everybody you were pretty been. good at winning arm wrestling matches, though, at one point. But Yeah, they put people that aren't good at arm wrestling in the top eight. 
Um, I was in the bottom eight. And you got beat by Bowen. You got beat by Bowen. You got beat by Ryan Bowen. That should tell you something right there. Okay, so look, immediately after saying that, I regretted it. (laughs) I didn't mean to bring it up. We don't got to talk about it. Fuck. You got beat by Ryan Bowen. Hey, look, I coached Ron back (laughs) into that win, okay? When he came to the corner and he's like, I'm getting tired. I was like, you cannot let Ryan win. You will forever be known as the guy that lost to Bowen. 40 years of legacy, gone. You'll be remembered as the guy that lost to Bowen. Trust me. You have a a legacy? What's your legacy? I'm not sure if I should kick you out of the show or if I should just end it. (laughs) What? what? I want to know what your legacy is. What's your best win? It depends, oh, yeah, it, it depends on what your interpretation of a win is. I'll you know say his be, his best win is surviving until the age of forty. Uh, arm wrestling wise, beating Devin. Oh my God, he must have been hurt. Nope. Oh God, no, I couldn't beat him when he was he's good, but you can beat him when he's good. Well, I think me and you. I think the next arm guys, me and you should have a match. Yes. How yes! hardcore we want to go. Battle of the Beards. I think me and I shaved my beard off of nobody. I think me and you should have a match. Just just straight up fucking arm wrestling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, do we want electric pads, thumbtacks, roof and nails, or Timmy's not so hardcore when it's him up there? I didn't say anything about arm gods. You said arm gods. I said you and arm gods. Oh, it's got to be hardcore if you're on it. Oh, man, I'm not qualified to arm wrestle anymore if it's not hardcore. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> Neither are you. Holy <laughs> fuck. You haven't won a match in longer than me. But I, I think you just make a part of arm gods now. You can't get rid of him. Even if he's the fucking sideshow, he's going to be there. <laughs> yeah, I am Dude, literally like herpes. I just will never go away. <laughs> Listen, he's got to be. You want me to be your herpes? I'll be your herpes, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same I'm, the red. I'm the red in the arm guards, yeah. So, Timmy, you want, to have a, you want to have a hardcore match with me? I want to have a match with you. A hardcore yeah. match? No. My, straight up. You want tax or electrical? Not straight up. It, it doesn't tax matter. or electrical? It doesn't straight. matter. You'll, ne- you'll never pin Tim, so it doesn't matter. Oh, Just agree to it, Tim. He's Roy, why don't ready. you stay out of this? I'm talking I'm to Tim. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And if you if you early start like you did, you might get the left hand over the top. I'm not <laughs> worried about your left hand at all. Oh, the left hand still hits pretty hard. Eh. <laughs> not friends, but it hits pretty hard. Eh. As, as much as much as you're gonna hurt me on the downside, the left hand. Eh. All right. So what me and you, you me and you and I'm God? Yeah. Yeah, I can't read. Uh-huh. Okay, crickets. arm gods. Crickets. Are we doing a hardcore match or not? We're going to do a straight up fight? You want to fight me now? No, no, you dumbass. Straight up arm wrestling. I'll <laughs> fucking fight you, you old bastard. I will punch your shoulder so fucking hard your hip will break, you geriatric fuck. <laughs> you ain't fucking with my feet, Junior. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> You think, Look, you gonna, I can say whatever the fuck I want to you, and it won't piss you off dude, unless I'm talking about your dog. Are we going to arm wrestle or what? Man, I ain't afraid of you. I'll arm wrestle you. So arm wrestle. Set it up. All right, let's, let's do it hardcore. What are you worried about if you're that much better? I don't want to look like a retard. Oh, yeah, because that's going to fucking go well in your favor. Your entire fucking life, people have been looking at you saying, holy shit, he has licked that lollipop too many times off the ground. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to because you're a fucking retard. Everybody else knows what it meant. By Ron Pack. Oh my God. Every time I go to your house, I just want to jerk off on your windows and let nature take its course. You'll listen, get it. You, listen, you won't get nowhere near my house. I guarantee you. you want to put- <laughs> no fucking way. I got 220 dogs that run around loose all night long. You would never know. And I got Roy watching my back, Timmy. We're good. Hey, do you want to fucking fire this up or not? You yeah, want to do a soft core match so it could go oh, on TV? Yeah, it's going to be, be soft core because you're in it. Definitely. 
If you like, if you like, uh, the only thing you like, talked about me is Mike Wiener listening to your excuses. You're, I ain't an excuse. I want to pull you straight up. If you like, if you it's hard to get up for you, Timmy. You're just not that attractive anymore. You got old, buddy. You just said I'm, you said my my glasses turned you on. Yeah, it's your glasses, but I mean, you can set them on the desk. I'll still jerk off it's, on them. You don't have to be there. Put a little maggot. Get off, fucking Timmy. Get off. Look, you challenge. I what up? And now all of a sudden, you're not in. I challenge. I challenge you to arm wrestle. Let's go. Yeah. Let's arm and I want to fucking make it exciting. I'm, I'm sixty. You're forty, and I'm sixty. Am I forty? I'm sixty. Fuck, I'm old too. Jesus Christ. Old. Even, Jesus, hey, you're not even I'm, that old to me anymore. Fuck. I'm 67 years old if you can't beat me. Okay, so are we fighting or what? Let's do it. Okay. I'm in. Hardcore. Nunchucks. I don't know how to <laughs> use those, but I'll do it. Little people with nunchucks who just come at you. like when you, uh, when you Fucking you Timmy's going to come at me with fucking nunchucks made out of two purple dildos. Oh, no. Uh, you want to go get the oak ones? Or what? So, fine, but I want Small Italia as a guest referee. (laughs) Small Italia. He's got to be able to see over the fucking. He's got to be able to see over the fucking pad. We'll get him a riser. No, no, Nanya, Nanya is referee. Oh fuck, Nanya wants to join the show tonight to talk about his match with Paul. Oh man, why'd you put Paul Paul on tonight? We 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 already have enough of the tism on tonight's show. You know what I mean? You you know why, Tim? He's scared, right? Who is? Well, I'd make two people on here tonight. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Tim. Just... So me yeah. and you, Arm Gods, hardcore match. You don't have the belt, so why the fuck I have to pull John? <laughs> I didn't say for the hardcore title. I said hardcore match. Look, I you got a chance. You got to get the, look, the there's only two guys in the rankings for the hardcore right now. That's me and John. He's a well, champ. Well, I'm the I, number one. You want to take my number one contender spot? Come get it. I'm, let's do it. Come get it. What's the hardcore? What's the stakes? I'm shocked. We want. Shocked. You want the electric? You want the like the cattle fence pads? You want That's the fine. thumbtacks? Where do we want to go? Look, we can do thumbtacks. We can do electric shock. I don't give a fuck. Oh. We'll have electricity running through the thumbtacks if you want. That's oh, gonna be the next. You gotta save that for the next Valhalla, you know. That's you step know, three. That's step three. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, tax. So you and I, the hardcore number one spot. Shock tax. For you, you, an electric match, like it's 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 nothing crazy. We're not talking about like full on stun gun, just like. Uh, you know, Two, the electric oh, standing in a tank with live electric eels. The next like, one, I'm telling you, like the cattle fucking fence, right? Fence. It's, it's gonna, gonna snap you, but it's not crazy. If it's <laughs> electrified, it has to be like an electric fence where it's on and off, on and off because no, it stays no, on. No, you'll never get off if it stays on all the time. You gotta have just That's a right. pop. Apparently, no, you don't understand off. amperage, Roy Baker. I understand goddamn electric fences. I've been on them around You don't here. understand goddamn anything but fucking bullets because you would have scored more than zero on the fucking trivia night, so shut the fuck up. We're talking. Yeah, Tim, we have a deal. You and I for the number one contender for the hardcore belt. Yes or no? I said yes. You can't. Yes. You can't. I'll, there's okay. no backing down from this, Tim. Once you said yes, there's no there's backing one, down. There's one condition. There's one condition. One condition. You don't do that gay fucking beer can to the head thing again. You that don't touch my beard. What's I gotta do? What's I gotta if do? You pull my beard, I'll hit you with a beer can. But you ain't hit the first two. You missed I them hit with both, both of those pricks with the beer can. Oh, no, you did not. You lying sack of shit. Now you're lying again. I am not lying. I definitely I hit both of them with watched, beer cans. I watched both slow motion. You missed both of them with the beer can. Well, oh, then you're ah. blinder than fuck. Uh, so prop, prop beer cans. You must have had the cane corso jizzing in your eye because I definitely hit them with the she beer doesn't can. Have she doesn't have a pecker. She's got a pussy. Then that <laughs> makes it even more impressive. But uh, let's, let's you dude, come my- watch it in slow-mo. I fucking I definitely hit them. I did. I will not allow this. That is just over the line. Tim, I definitely hit them with the beer can. 
Yes, I promise you. I definitely hit them and hit them hard. Aim with a gun is better than your aim with a beer can because you suck at it. You miss. <laughs> Except I hit them. So, okay. So, anyways, no beer can stunt. No I beer would can. not hit you with a beer can if you don't pull my beard. They didn't pull your beard. They stroked it like a fucking homosexual. <laughs> right, which is cause to hit him with a fucking beer can. If I was gonna, if I was gonna pull your fucking beard, we'd be pulling that motherfucker. Right. If you touch a man's beard and they hit, smack you in the side of the head with a beer can, I think it's all fair. Yeah, I mean, that that Tim, be, what you want your one stipulation to be I don't hit you with a beer can. No, I, I don't say do fine. Don't, don't the touch my it, beard. After the third time, it gets dumb. Okay, cool. Don't it's touch my beard. I it's promise it's I won't do it. Hit me with a chair. Hit me with a table. Don't do the same fucking stunt again. I'm going to hit a table with you. Old. Jesus old. Christ. Like, I will pick you up, spin you upside down, and put you to oh the table. My God. What are you going to do? Get Big B to do it? Because you should have <laughs> do it. Well, I mean, he's going to help me lift your fat ass, but I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do the throwing to the table myself. You got his right hand, right? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You already said yes, and the hardcore title is left hand only. It's right hand, right? I don't know. No, you agreed to enter the rankings of the hardcore title, I, which is I'm left hand left. only. I know I'm wrestling left handed. Yeah, then you shouldn't have signed up for the left handed match into the hardcore. I didn't. There was nothing. The right -handed there is match. no right handed hardcore <laughs> title. Anyway. There is no league in the world with a hardcore title for the right arm. Only Iron Guts has a hardcore title, and it is left arm only. Tim, you just signed up for an electric fucking match. Say that. Hardcore rankings, left hand. I knew you'd find a way to sleaze out of it. I knew it. When I started offering this to be a hardcore match, not a regular match, you should have known I was up to something. <laughs> Why the fuck it's, it's, would it's I think I've got a chance of beating the book? I would Paul. do the hardcore match right-handed with you. Okay. And then left. No left. Why? God, my left sucks. Where's so so my right? Yeah, but my left, I, I haven't even trained my left in fucking 15 years. And <laughs> my right has been at the level of your right Never. You're right. Right. You're right. Yeah. But I'm old. I'm old and decrepit now. You already said it. But so what? You want people to sign up to watch a match where it is easily you're just gonna run me over right handed and I don't even get a chance to smack you around right after? I'm gonna, I'm gonna run you over. How old is Ron? How old is Ron Bass? It's been out for a long time. Timmy. We both know I got zero chance with you right-handed. And my left don't work. Right. So, right like, the odds right. are the same, both hands. But this, you know I don't pull left-handed, so you just squeeze your way out of it. I and you, you know I don't pull at your fucking level. So why are you even trying to get a match, you fucking pussy? <laughs> But you say I suck. Oh, I just lost 17 old, matches in a row. Give me an suck. easy one. I got it. I ain't lose 17. I've lost one of the last five I've been in. You're only as good as your last match, so you suck. You lost two. Yeah, but I've lost a bunch, so I'm used to sucking. I heard that about you. BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just, this fucking computer just die again? <laughs> uh, did it? I, I, I knew he'd find a way out of it. I knew it. <laughs> my earbuds really really. about to shoot. I need dinner yet. I'm going to eat dinner. Tell yeah. Evan, set it up. Right and smack. left. Set it up. Right and left. Listen, you got your earbud in? Set it up. Right Ooh. and left. Set it up. Both hands, yes? Set it up. Both hands. That's I mean, a yes. God, you are dumb as fuck. <laughs> I just, uh, no, no. I'm really good at this Set fucking around business. 
And I want to know if you're being clear that it's both hands. Shut it up. Both hands. Shut, Shut it up. up. Both That's hands. That's Look, yes. motherfucker, stop saying Shut it up and be very clear. Yes or no, both hands. Shut it up. <laughs> Shut you're gonna tell me that up. this motherfucker's not trying to pull some snaky shit? Shut it up. Snake right hand left hand. Right and oh, left. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. Did he just Let's say just right say. and left? He said right. it. Man, you know what sucks? This said, motherfucker's gonna like start like training his left hand and he's gonna like like whip me both hands. <laughs> I said it like 18 fucking times. Shut it Nobody up. Listen to you, Tim. Oh yeah, they <laughs> do. Listen, I'm not used to being on your show with only seven fucking viewers. Usually I'm fucking 300. What the fuck? You really must have went downhill. Whose fuck. fucking channel are you on with 300? When, we were, when, me, when I was on with Uncle John, it was 350. Yeah, we were on Uncle John's channel. That's different. I know it's different. It's a better channel. <laughs> yeah, uh, but lost, you would have been told not to call people retards eight times tonight. Why? What's wrong with that? Well, the John wouldn't let it. That's why I had to say it. Why not? Like, you don't even have to say Christian Biddy's voice when you're over here. Why not? Why, you, you say Roy's a faggot. It's fine. I, didn't, I, don't, I have nothing against Roy. I don't either. And his sexual proclivities are not my business. I was using it as an example. And I wouldn't say it about you because um, I don't want you to start training left-handed. And I wouldn't say it about me oh, because I would like to be alive for my next match. So I needed to pick somebody. I've been, training, I've been training my left hand. What? I've been training my left hand. You didn't tell me that. Oh, you're already beat. You're already oh. beat. Oh. You're already beat, Bear Man. You're already fucking beat. Set it up. Set it up. I'm ready. Set it up, Junior. You're fucked, Bear Man. So you, you know what? Like we got some really bad weather coming in, and it looks like this whole fucking stream got deleted. Roy, Roy's got it. Roy's got it. He'll just send it back to you. I got it saved. I'll, I'll drop the contract. Dude, if your left arm's not good, why do we even need to bother doing it? Like, Let's I make it interesting and just do I, left. I didn't say it was that good. I, but it, but I, would, I, will, I will compete with you. <laughs> I, guarantee, I guarantee it. My, my back pressure left-handed is, is fucking... My back pressure, my rotation left-handed is still over the top. You don't even know these words. It's like you read some arm wrestling lingo and you're just like throwing words out there. No, you you look you freaking almost don't use back pressure or rotation anymore. You use tupping and rising and this and that and no, all fuck. I use is uh, reverse down pressure. That's the only one I'm actually any good with anymore. Oh, well, it's gonna be reverse down pressure. It's guaranteed yeah. that you're gonna be your left hand. Guaranteed. Somebody told me that we were trying to lose the tag match. Who said that? That's why I was going the other way. Who said that? Um, They said whoever bleeds more loses, wins. Anyways. Look, I didn't even lose the tag match. Fuck that. That's bullshit. John put me into the tax twice. I put him into the tax four times. I think I win. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, 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 you don't have to worry about electricity. You get get it. You're getting it every time. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Did you lose him again? <laughs> I'm going to whoop your ass. I hope so. Me too. I'll let, you, I'll let you live with that fucking fantasy for the next whatever it is. Just don't do your king's move bullshit. Arm wrestle me like a man. <laughs> what? Don't you think you're going to win and hold you an inch above the pad and then smash you? Just That's come on in here and let's see what happens if you act like a man for the first time in your life, Tim. So I'm going to, so I should, I should arm wrestle your style to beat you. Well, because your style is the style you complain about, you know, the King's Move bullshit. Yeah, it, most certainly, it most certainly is not. What'd you have? Uh, 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 oh, yeah. I, uh, I can turn my wrist, and this is as far as my elbow goes because my bicep got touched up here. Blah, blah, blah. Because I stuck to arm wrestling when I was healthy, and it tore, and I made doctors make me a super arm wrestler by fucking 
extending it, and See, all it. is a hand. Blah blah blah, Tim. And and you you just fall right into the same shit you always fall into. Blah 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 blah. You sound like the fucking the adults from fucking the peanuts. Well, you're gonna set it up. Fuck you, you Tim Bresden. <laughs> <You're gonna> <laughs> hey, Timmy. <laughs> want you to understand? Fuck you. You, want to set it up? you are like the wish version of Michael Todd. You tried right. a king's move and you suck at it. It ain't a king's move. Yes, it is. Oh my yo, god. Yo, yo, DMT actually went and did a whole shitload of DMT. I love DMT. Oh, is he less delusional DMT now? I don't know. You mean you you mean MMT? Yeah, MMT. Well, we turned on DMT, delusional Michael Todd. And he's he went and did a whole bunch of No, Roy calls him monster Michael Todd because he's still a fucking nut swinger. Um Tim swinger. also calling him MMT. Because he just loves the King's move. That's why he fucking oh relies god. on it. Oh my god. Man, you lost him <laughs> Dogus. He's not even any good. What are you drinking? You lost Uncle John. You're drinking green beer. He, 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 he lost to the Blood King. Yeah. Look, losing to the Blood King is not anywhere near as painful as losing to Ryan Bowen. So I'm glad we got that one. Covered. Hey, you lost to Ryan Bowen too. Why are you bringing that up? Because you just said it again. I, I did not. I'm gonna fucking lost beat you. you. You're gonna be the guy that lost to the guy that lost to Ryan Bowen. So well, you lost to Tim Bradley left, Timmy. lost to Tim Bradley left hand. That bad. If you That's keep talking, Ryan. if you keep talking like this, I'm gonna give you one. Give it to me, please. Please. Timmy, <laughs> please don't don't count out the old man. You're you, you, you acting like Travis Bajan again. The only person he's ever hit was a sixty year old man. Yeah, so except this, Richard ain't showing up to save your ass, pussy. I'll be there. Richard didn't save my ass at all. No, no, uh, the, not the story you puppy. told tonight, jumper. No, I just told the I just told the story the way it was. I don't have to embellish like other people we know. I yeah. told the same fucking story you did, dickhead. And what about the both story? of them involved what about the Richard Lumpkins saving what about your the... ass. Because you were like, oh, Travis and the Ryan Bowen. We lost the Ryan Bowen. We lost the Ryan Richard Bowen. Richard. I never lost the Ryan I Bowen. I'm sure he says it's okay. Oh, easy, okay. easy, easy. You're talking about a Christian man there. I didn't say he agreed to it. He fucking took pity on okay. you. Because it's unfair you, that you were getting picked on. Didn't even say anything to him, and I wasn't getting. I said you offered it. Offered what? Hand job. With your it's left hand. Because the women, your left hand belongs to a girl, and so it's, it's not even gay for you to do it. Whoops! The damn hand's ass. We're gonna see how bad it is. Look, your left hand is like the hand of a girl. It's not even have gay you, for you to jerk a dude off you, with it. Have you seen the story about the West Virginia most inbred people? Oh yeah, well, they're fucked. Number two goes for the valley in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly he has been to Wilno and never Pembroke. Because fuck me, Wilno is bad. There is four family last names in that town of fucking four thousand people. How many cousins you got in the valley? Why? <laughs> Look, he's getting drunk. You can't even fucking count anymore. Wow. Yeah, I, I think we just say thirty or forty when we signed, wasn't it? I have thirty-six first cousins on my father's side. Is there another side? My mother's side. You fucking dumb fuck. Isn't that not like the same thing though? Your mom and dad get, your mom and dad, mom and dad get divorced. So here's brother. the thing. I'm not sure if Timmy's smart enough to have fucking set a trap like that for me. Or if inspiration hit at the last moment and he came up with a great zum digger. Does, does it matter? It, 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 it got out there. It's better it than making it. But it I want to know because I am way too drunk to be involved with this conversation if you're leading me into traps like that. 
Tim's just outwitted you, beer man. He would have a battle. That's what I want to know. Because maybe I answered the question, but he was like, oh, he doesn't even know he's so drunk. And I answered, and all of a sudden, he came up with it. Inspiration. Uh, either way, oh, no. it was... I, uh, I, I, lured you in, I lured you into a freaking arm wrestling match, didn't I? Left-handed. Both. Yeah, I don't care if I lose you right. Dude, it's not embarrassing to lose to you right-handed. I have lost to far worse than you right-handed uh, lately. I thought right. I was a, a, a 60 year old man. Yeah, and a bum on that world elite level. Is a world elite level of bums? Yes. Dude, we need we need to end this live stream because you're getting fucking really retarded now. <laughs> you're not allowed to say that. Uh, Evan. What? Shut up! <laughs> okay, so the world elite level of shit is a real thing. That's a lot of shit. Yeah, well, like, it's the guy that you gotta beat to get to the world elite level, right? It's... Big B, are you close to his house? <laughs> you go over and slap the shit out of him for me. I'm have to go yeah, to B. Okay. Yeah, B. Slap the shit out of you. <laughs> really? Power bomb. Power bomb. I don't like this conversation. Power bombing. Oh my god! Just hey, will you please like? Tim me? Bresden, stop it! I have said far worse things to be face to face that he should have beaten the living fuck out of me for, and he didn't because he loves me. <laughs> you couldn't convince him to do it. What? <laughs> you could not convince me to beat my ass. I tell him to beat your ass and just slap the shit out of you. Same thing. No? <laughs> no, because um, seriously, I don't give a fuck who you are. If you slap the shit out of me, I'm going to make you beat my ass. Like, gonna, I am going to fight back. You're going to slap it with a beer me. can? Are you going to slap it with a beer can? Is that like your go-to move? If you yeah, the beer. We're getting him like a tool belt that's just all for beer cans, though. I'll, I'll try to slap you with a beer can and miss for the third time. So what? <laughs> You're going to try to touch my beard now? You, you talking about that's touching this? You, you, you know what the upgrade to your stick should be? Is one of those yeah. like one of those like potato guns for beer cans. that, that they like, yeah. Some of those things that like, can get moving. Yeah, you're right. Do something different. I, I love mean, potato I mean, guns. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I'm going to shoot Tim Bresden with a potato gun full of beer cans. <laughs> with a Bud Light. With a Bud Light. If he the... touches my beard, that's where we're going. I'm going to grab you by the nutsack. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do, I'll probably kiss you. Just don't touch my beard. If I grab you by the nutsack, you're going to want to kiss me. I'm going to treat you like a fucking pull toy. You better have 50 bucks in your pocket. Jesus I ain't giving Christ, Jimmy. I will stick my <laughs> hand up your arse and use you like a sock puppet. You will say what I want when I want. With that fucking pussy arm of yours? Come on. Oh, man. It looks small, but that just makes it fit easier. I mean, she said. It That's how I reach all the way up there to work your vocal cords. It looks small. But that's what she said. It looks small. It feels small, too. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I get far enough to work your fucking larynx and you will say what I tell you to say when I'm working you like a sock puppet aggressive no, no. Timmy no. B, B, come over and slap the shit out of him please <laughs> you know, you, if you I love to... you brother and I've gotten <laughs> away with a lot of shit and lord knows I deserve it he does, he does. And I'm okay if you like Face kick the fuck out of me. As long as we can have a beer in the morning. I don't want to face but if you one. slap the fuck out of me, we're fighting. It's not okay for you to slap me. That's some <laughs> bullshit. It's called a pitch slap. Yeah, but fucking do not slap baby. me. Do not spit on me. I'm okay <laughs> if I deserve to get a little. Look, you want to give me a little punch out? I take a nap. Fine. You want to like a tornado kick the fuck out of my head? 
whatever. Don't you fucking slap me. Don't spit on me, you motherfucker. Uh, Pushing up on my arm the way you did was the line. Not unless, not unless he's getting bought in dinner first. So when you say spit on you, are you okay with a pecker spitting on you? I think you are, Roy. I think you like peckers spitting all over you. Who the fuck let Roy talk? <laughs> you're getting drunk. If you don't have big, if you don't have Big B on the show right now, you would look even dumber than you normally do. Uh, you're getting drunk. Okay, so you're saying Big B makes me look smart. That sounds like Big B is so dumb that I look smart. And that's uh, just rude, Tim. That's not what I said. It's, uh, definitely not what <laughs> I would look dumber if B wasn't here. So I look smart yes, because B okay, is here. That look, means B is so dumb, I up, look smart. B, you going to take that shit from Timmy? Okay, you understand take that shit from Timmy. You, you can't let him talk like that. understands what I said. Not like you. Hey, you can't let him talk like that. Anyways, I'm going to go eat dinner. Uh -oh. I'm at a night. I'm getting I bet you have seven dicks waiting. No. Damn, that's a lot of dicks. Yeah. Well, I mean, you he's a growing you boy, you right? You, you don't stay you 300 fucking pounds at 60 fucking years old. Are you, are you, are you, are you jealous? Are you jealous? BBC, are you jealous? <laughs> you get fed all that BBC. BBC, bad company. <laughs> How are you doing? He had to think about his only one B in bad company. Yeah. No, it's yeah, beer man. Drugs. No, you're he taking advantage of me being drunk right now, and that's rude. It's beer man for going. Beer, beer, beer oh, man for BBC. I gotta go. Oh, Tim, my I think you're making fun of me right now. I am I'm not okay fun. with it. So because I don't understand what you're saying, I'm gonna take that as a disrespect. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have to get all out of hand. And why and, don't we? I challenge you to a duel right now. Let's go. Ten steps and draw. Okay. What are you gonna use? I Next got off? my piece. Oh, which one? I, I, Stand I up, have... turn your back, about face, 10 oh, steps, I turn, turn it down. I'm not, I am not turning my back at any point. Okay. That ain't happening. Hey, look, motherfucker, I'm a man of my word. You understand how you Frenchmen work. You like to see somebody's butt. <laughs> I'm a little pecker as I turn around. I might not get a gun. We understand how that works. Don't you have uh, to go, like, eat supper or something? I, I do. So why I, so I, don't you just, like, fucking leave? Okay. There I go. Good. Good. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. I don't want to talk to you sideways either. <laughs> you fucking weirdo. Good sideways is not better. Just fucking go away. Later, Tim. Bye, Tim. <laughs> Bye, Tim. We'll see you at Arm Gods, pussy. You won't show up. <laughs> I show up every fucking time. Tim Brezzard, you think I'm afraid of you, motherfucker? <laughs> Can we get married? You broke <laughs> off, Timmy. <laughs> I see you sticking around, and you're not leaving. You keep saying you're leaving. Why aren't you leaving? Oh man, you oh, still here? Man. He just turned off. He just turned off the camera. Oh, there now he's, he's gone. There he's gone. gone. Nice. That was fun. That was fun. That always was really cool, fun. Always cool when Tim Breslin stops by. I oh, think I, I just kind of lost the trash talking thing to a sober guy. Yeah, he, he, he definitely fucked you up. But a sober guy end, doesn't talk trash. <laughs> especially at the end, he definitely, he definitely won. He definitely got you at the end. Yeah, right sure. at the end. I mean, I had to like tell him to leave because he won, yeah, and I'm like, he, it's not he, okay he to lose to a sober guy him. that doesn't even talk trash. Yeah, come on, man, just leave, man. Fuck sakes, he's gonna get killed here. Like hey. I literally. Have my fucking wiener receding. 11 11. You should make a wish that your wiener oh, isn't. It is 11 11. You need to post that. Okay. So that was a whole lot of fun. Um, what are the chances that you think that guy's actually going to hold me 
to this fucking match. <laughs> I hope he does. Uh, one thing I learned about Tim Bresson is if you shy him on like four or five times, he's probably just going to give in. So, like, I know he says he doesn't drink, but at Arm Gods, he drank. So I think maybe. Oh, no, like, it's not that he doesn't drink. He just doesn't drink. Right, like he yeah, will. Okay, like, even if he doesn't drink, I say like if you like shy him on about four or five times, you probably start having some drinks with him. Oh yeah, know? yeah. Like he will drink. It, it, he just doesn't normally drink, but he can yeah, and he, he will. Can challenge Tim Bresson at just about anything. He will eventually say yes to him. So like I have to do it now, right? Yeah, because you 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 called him out like too many times. I didn't call him out. He called me out. Yeah, allegedly. Roy, did I do it? Yeah. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I had to piss again. This is bullshit. I did uh, not call Tim Bresnan out. He called me out. I uh, wanted a left-handed match only, and I didn't know he was training left-handed. Apparently, apparently he wants a fucking apparently he wants a layup match there. You know, so he wants he wants the beer man. <laughs> You know, he wants a nice little vacation, easy day at the office, make you yeah. fucking, make your beard smolder from fucking electricity and <laughs> fucking have a good time doing it. Oh, whatever. <laughs> it was hilarious. I'm, I'm just imagining Beer Man getting slammed to the pad and then sort of like Home Alone when he touches the door handle. You know what I mean? Imagine this guy's happening in the fucking Beer Man. <laughs> Oh man! I love it when Tim said, "I've been training my left," and Beer Man was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> I honestly, I think, I think, I don't think he has trained his left in 15 years. But just because he's now agreed to a left-handed match, he's now starting the mental game. <laughs> he knows he knows he knows he has an opponent on the mental front with fucking oh, he, Tim Bresden has the mental capacity <laughs> of your fucking hat. Fuck right off. And not the hat you're wearing, but that Sens hat that never gets worn. Hey, Super right, Chat. Right. Super Chat. Tim Bresden is... I fucking love that guy, man. I can't talk shit to him when he's not here. Yeah. But he's not going to win a left-handed match against me. Like, his left hand really is really, really yeah. good. I love Tim. He's awesome. Super <laughs> oh, me too, man. Tim... Hey, when I said Tim Bresnan is one of my very favorite art wrestlers, like just to sit around, have a drink, and listen to. I meant it. Like the yeah. dude. And Tim was definitely a cool shit. I had uh, fucking the privilege of uh, having a couple drinks and shooting the shit with him. He's definitely a fucking uh, cool guy. And Mike Gould. Now, I'm sure there's a few of those dudes that I've never met and I don't know that side of that could make that list. But as of right now, if I were to do the whole fucking bucket list, of if you could pick three arm wrestlers to sit at a table with and listen to the stories, it's going to be Mike Gould, Tim Bresden, and John Mill. Yes. Right. And I have heard most of those stories, I think, from those guys. And it's still those guys I want to do it with. Like, they're just fucking awesome dudes that uh, even though you can't respect the things that they're saying because they're despicable. Despicable. Well, you, 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 one thing that was a fun experience. You can't publicly do it or say you respect their stories in front of your mother. One thing I'll but, tell you right now, I'm fucking uh, one thing I had the pleasure of doing was and after with RVJ, like I tell you right now, he doesn't do steroids, but he does cocktails. <laughs> I'll yes, tell you that. Does. Look, RVJ will do anything. He will do steroids. He will do tail, and he will do cock. Oh, I hope we get that little thing clipped so he he's said. Uh, uh, he's, <laughs> he's, Roy, can you clip that? Family. Or is DF still in here? Clip that one thing. Send it to RVJ because that's fucking hilarious. Uh, oh a, God! For a guy, for a guy who gets as saucy as he does, he he's he has a good time. Like he's a uh, he's he was definitely a, he was definitely a good time. Yeah, no, I love Rob. Uh, 
You that would that definitely be a fourth seat for sure. Yeah, he brought down his uh, his buddy and his wife, and they were both fucking. They're from Boston, and they're fucking. They're awesome too. They're fucking both cool people as well. I never got to talk to them much. No, yeah, no, you missed out there. Uh, his, his, uh, I, I, if I thought about their names, I could, I, I, I would recall them for sure. But uh, the husband was a fucking awesome dude, and his wife was fucking cool as shit too. An awesome lady. Yeah. You know, but a little bit, a little bit of Boston flavor in Ireland. You know, we all we all ate a mess. I mean, you laughed, but it was that day when we were all getting. Uh, we we're at um, PJ O'Hare's Oyster Bar when you showed up, and then all of a sudden, all the fucking oysters started hitting the table, and you laughed. Oh yeah, it. yeah, I had to leave. But the fucking drinks were flowing. I'll tell you that much. Holy fuck! Yeah, I just had to leave. It was. Uh, Tim was uh, Tim ended up coming out. Too. Tim ended up meeting us there. Fucking, uh, th- there's a picture that got taken there. That's a really good picture. Somebody has it, but I don't. But uh, fuck yeah, that was a that was actually one that that was one of my hang- my hangover days. Was after that day. Uh, yeah, I went home. That was the Thursday night. It was the one that I didn't get drunk the entire time in Ireland. Oh yeah. You I took don't. one day off earlier in the week. I took that day off. Yeah. Uh, I, I got lucky. Honestly, the Irish air, I think, just fucking heals you oh, a bit different. I don't shit. know. I missed a super chat. Yeah. Yeah, I said it earlier. Fuck you, bro. You didn't listen. Well, I'm glad you read it, and I don't have to redo it. I didn't read it. I just said there was one. JT for $5 says, cheers to Uncle John beating that ass. <laughs> That's not what it says. A- you don't even know how to spell that fucking idiot. Those are A- dollar signs. Dollar sign. Dollar fucking sign. stupid guy. Yeah. No. Maybe. So I, I just want you to know, I drank four of these. These ten point two percent stouts. I know exactly what that is. That's gonna be like fucking nine beers. And I also might have done something else too, but still, I am super fucked. What's up. this something else? Uh, Allegedly, we're all playing characters on the show. No yeah, I mean, it might yet. be it might be hash oil, maybe. Allegedly, I sensed, I sensed it was oil so, related. That's what you want to highlight. I did a little bit of hash oil. And four ten point two percent beers, dude. As a passenger, go for a four minute drive with Big B, and you are more fucked up than doing hash oil. Fuck. <laughs> I, I rode with Big B. Rode yeah, Big we B. all saw what happened. We went and got poutine. <laughs> no, we did. We sure did. I didn't. I couldn't eat any of it because I was so fucked up. But I, we still got it. I ate like one French fry, and then that was it. I was like, I can't eat this. I went for a drive with Big B once, and I don't remember any of it. <laughs> and and he I was, was driving. driving. And wow. He was driving exactly. Yeah. Just uh, Big B is not a good road trip partner. No. No, he's especially when he ever collapsed lung. <laughs> yeah, she was smoking dope with a collapsed lung. She was, she was. <laughs> I, I, I salute her for that. Does that make it easier or harder? I'm harder. gonna assume. Um, You're not gonna get as high. You only got one lung. Shit was hitting for sure. It probably helped. It probably helped the lung a bit, you know. Oh, you and all your ketamine and your fucking weed. <laughs> she's got to be. She's got to be tough to deal with you, beer man. Roy, you need to mind your fucking business. <laughs> that was a compliment. Not to me. No, definitely. Yeah, it was. 
definitely have nothing bad to say about uh, about Mrs. Beerman. She's uh, we've done two countries together now, and both have been fucking double thumbs. She survived that she survived Ireland. Like the fight in Irish came at her, and she's she's still standing. So <laughs> there is no way to dispute the fucking get at her. Yeah. From that one, I mean, fuck we, me. She, we got at her and fucking went to Dublin and horse and broken arse, broken right. lung, fuck, yeah. pink yeah. eye. <laughs> no. Hold on. And it's official to say is like after this, uh, after this trip is like I, I definitely won't uh, say her name incorrectly anymore. The guy got locked in there. He got locked in. I don't believe you. Did she break her tailbone? Yes. Yeah. Day we were, like the day we got there, yeah. she got all drugged up. Yeah. And we went to the, the bar and she's like, do you know where the bathroom is? Like, yeah, but it's like a weird little place that you got to like, it's like you're leaving the bar, but you got to take a, a quick shimmy. And I showed her the bathroom is. She's like, okay, we're good. And she backs through the bathroom door and then so drunk she fell. And went arse first into the sink and broke her tailbone, her coccyx four and five are broken and it's five millimeters displaced. Ugh. Ugh. Have you ever heard a story? Have you ever heard a story about Terry Funk when he broke his tailbone wrestling? And there's Roy Baker's like, one day I got fucked by my cousin. And my tailbone got pushed all the way out of place. Oh, boy. Terry Funk broke his tailbone, and he was so committed to making the next several shows. Like, for a month, he had to fly on a plane, and he couldn't sit in his fucking seat in his plane. He had to kneel and face the seat and just, like, hold onto the seat and sleep on his knees. Like, his broke his Well, Terry ass. Funk seems like the guy that wants to be on his knees all the time. Oof. Ter Terry Funk would have killed you. That was rude. Roy, 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 Roy likes to come at you these days. He, he's coming right at you, especially. When I think Roy needs phone. to get put back in his place like, and really understand his role. Like, like he's think, left his he, corner of the no second, control the second, the second, and Jabroni Drive. The fucking right. second conversation got heated. We're gonna have to bring him back to the SmackDown the Hotel. Time. Terry Funk was shit. So was Dory. No. You take that back, or the next arm gods mean you were having a fucking pit fight. Yeah, yeah well, I'm going to do that right after I fuck up Tim Breslin. That's right. You, you arm wrestle Tim Breslin, then me and you were getting in the fucking cage. Roy, don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> it won't be fun. It won't be fun. For who? For you. Yeah, we're, we're you right. Yeah, we'll out mid round. I'll you'll be Bob Backlund. I'll be the Iron Sheik on the your back, putting you in the camel clutch. Are you I'll, fucking kidding? I break the back of the jabroni. <laughs> you are gonna be like the original Jeff Hardy on a squash match. Here's the bad thing. I'll finish you with the Ric Flair figure four. Make you. I out. will literally do push ups while making you cry. <laughs> figure four. Woo! And when I roll over and do push ups, you're going to cry. That's the reversal. Push ups. No, no you're not going to roll over. No push ups. I like doing push ups. You know the difference? Push-ups. You That's what I do, son. Ric Flair, but you got titties like Charlotte Flair. Mine are probably bigger oh, than wow. hers. They're pretty big. I mean, both yours and hers. And she got fake ones? I don't even know. You know what? Ric Flair actually had... He was a fucking jack dude. Until he got in the plane crash. No, he was fat before that. He was oh, no, no. He was fucking... 
he was enormous. He was a muscular motherfucker. He was three hundred. He, lo- he gave up a ton of fucking muscle. He and gave then, up a lot of fat. He gave up a lot of fat. I mean, he was three hundred pounds. Ric Flair, when he was young, was fucking enormous. Yeah, and not a fat fuck. Like he was just fucking Jack. Like he looked fat, but he had a fucking six pack. Yeah, and his fucking tits were the size of your head, and he wasn't that fat. And then he was believable that he could have actually beaten these dudes. And hey. then he started doing this weird flop over the turnbuckle or fall sideways every time he got hit with a fucking fart. He didn't fall flat on his back because his back was fucked up from that plane crash. He always took it to the side. Holy. Anytime he, anytime every he- fucking bump was on the hip. Yes. Right. No, I could give you a little bit of accommodation. Like 40 fucking years of taking bumps on the same hip. Fuck. Yeah. It's not believable. Terrible selling. Terrible wrestler. Not a fan of Ric Flair. Bullshit. He's one of the best ever. He's the best since 1970 forward. I mean, he's fucking great. Can't take. I can't do it. He could he could have fucking sixty minute match in Tokyo, Japan. Get on a plane and fly to fucking Greensboro, North Carolina, and get off the plane and have another sixty minute fucking match. Right, and he had eighty seven beers on the way, and he wrestled four hundred fifty three days a year. Fuck Ric Flair. He's, he's not that good. Oh, how good? Oh, so he's not as good as fucking Hulk Hogan, the fucking non working piece of shit who couldn't have but a six minute match and fucking all his. Cartoon bullshit that sucks. Well, the money would say you are correct when saying that. Who Hulk made Hogan, more money? Hulk Hogan sucked ass. He made Who more money. Made more he, was, money? he made more money because he was in New York putting in all that bullshit that appeals to the Northeast and Who Canada. made more money? Hulk Hogan did. So who was the better at their job? Ric Flair by a mile. Then why didn't he make more money? Because he was in a different he wasn't place. Better. He was in a different place, and you know Hulk Hogan sucks ass and couldn't fucking work. You know that. Don't even fucking lie. I look Who's back at it. Ever do it, even greater than Andre. What? <laughs> Who's better than no. Andre? I said he was the greatest ever do it, even greater than Andre. Who was? <laughs> old Hulky. The old Hulkster. No. No one was better than the Hulk. And- no. Hulk Hogan sucked ass. So, I he mean, was, it'd be as, he was show as, as purely, purely from the business sense and who made the most money. The go. Hogan did make more money than Andre did. Yes. But Austin made far more than Hogan. Well, so you, cool. and that's all. Uh, some of that, I agree. I think Austin at his height was bigger than Hulk Hogan was. At his, in his hot prime, he, he was. But that's all adjusted for inflation dollars anyway. Now, when you're talking monetarily, yes. But if you're talking worldwide recognition, no. Everybody knew who Stone Cold or who Hulk Hogan was. There is still people today. Do you know who Hulk Hogan is? Yes. Do you know who Stone Cold is? No. So on Well, one that's because they're a certain age and they quit watching it. They quit watching it after that, right? Right. But it's not necessarily I mean, even the age group you're asking. Children know who Hulk Hogan is, but not Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right. Now, who's a better worker? Oh, God, I'm a better worker than fucking Hulk Hogan. He sucked. So was Uncle John. We all saw how that went. I mean, Steve Austin's a way better fucking worker than fucking Hulk Hogan. Well, that's not saying much. It's not a very high bar. Man, I look back and he wasn't that good. His stomp of mud hole shit looked bad. His everything looked bad. His Luthes press looked bad. Uh, but but Hogan everything sucked. looked bad. His mic work and attitude sold all of it. He, he was no in Hogan's fucking fucking giant boots. He was better in the ring than Hulk Hogan. I'm sorry, he was. And right, I know people right people, right again. Do I have to do the whole Special Olympics thing again? I know people will talk about Hogan in Japan and how he worked a lot harder because he did. And he was actually, if you look at any of his Japan shit, he actually had to, like, compete in Japan. He had to I have wrestle. seen some of those matches that were shoots. And he, 
Well, not really shoots. They're half-ass shoots where the yes. guys are actually trying to hook them. Everything in Japan is at least half a shoot. Or he was. had to fight back, and it was much better. But yes. that didn't make him money. Like No, I mean, look, if you're talking about making money, Hogan was phenomenal at a very specific thing. At being and the that New was York getting thing. Yeah. the crowd behind him. Yeah, I saw the fucking, uh, and the fucking hulking up and all that bullshit. Yeah, it was cartoon bullshit. New now, York fucking I was a bullshit. very young child. I was born in 84. He won the fucking title in 83. Yeah. Right? So, growing up, I watched this shit, and I believed. I did. I was a child. But holy fuck, I believed it. So for that, he was actually very, very good at what he did. Because Even you though, because you were five you were years looking, old, if you look analytically at how his ring work was, oh my oh, god, terrible! Oh. Like the only guy that made big money that was worse than him was the Warrior. Oh god, he was the fucking drizzling shits always. He made Hulk Hogan look like fucking Luthez. He was Luthez terrible. Was also shit. Luthez would fucking hook you now, and he's dead. Luthez would fucking stick your left fucking big toe in your right ear now, and he's fucking dead. Don't ever talk about Luthez. I've never seen a Luthez match. That's because all his matches were before TV even fucking happened. He would stretch your fucking asshole. There you go, talking all that stupid shit. Luthez would fucking kill you. We can both agree that most of the major stars were not the best workers. Period. Flair, Flair was one of the best workers ever for the Man, modern style. I, it just was. I've you heard all of the testimonies from all the other wrestlers and how every one of them is like, man, Ric Flair was the man. Even Hogan said Flair was the man. Yes. Um, except I watched the matches and there is not a time Go back and watch. Agree. Go back and watch his matches with Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Barry, Steamboat. That was the one I was going to bring up. They, with Barry Windham, he had some of the craziest matches. With Barry Windham, you cannot judge Ric Flair by what you saw of him in the WWF because the WWF is not wrestling. I'm not watched. judging Ric Flair by the one I saw in the WWF. I'm <laughs> saying I watched all of Ric Flair's shit, that, and it was always the same. Because you're going back and watching the big matches that are now on YouTube, he didn't do that. Every, I mean, like people look back on it and they go, well, I've watched all the big fucking Ric Flair matches that I was saying. It's like, you Dude, see all that's how wrestling was in the seventies and eighties. You would do 45 house shows of the same fucking match moving around city to city to yeah. practice. And now you've got the big one that's going to get recorded. So you've had 45 house shows being fucking practiced. And now you're going to do the real one. That's true to some extent, yes. Right. But, but with Ric Flair, it didn't matter if you were Andre the Giant or the Junkyard Dog. When he got thrown into the turnbuckle, he flipped upside down and walked on the apron and fell over. Like it, That was the Ray Stevens bump. But here's, I the get thing, it. here's the thing about Ric Flair, though. He made so many people. He made Sting. He made people. He okay, sold. So on that end, I will agree with you. He, he sold. did a lot for a lot of people. And he never. Right? He is he not never, Roddy Roddy Piper that would never do a job. He did the job. He would he, fucking make you look awesome. He put people over. He put people over. And a lot of the time it was, I will make him look fucking fantastic as long as I get to win. And sometimes it was, I'll make him look fantastic and give him the win before I move on. I'm not saying he wasn't good at business. I'm saying I watched the matches and it was never a believable thing for me. He had some goofy spots. The, the, the upside down in the turnbuckle spot is a goofy spot. However, he didn't Oh my that. God. How many times have you seen him get hit with something and he takes seven steps sideways around the ring? I agree. That right. was a bit, he did that a little much. I agree. Now, maybe but, I'm just too fucking young. 
Oh, you are. But that is I exactly can't it. get behind it. I was already too smart by the time I saw the old works. I don't know. Yeah. If you had watched, it's just not a thing. Look, Ricky Steamboat, that motherfucker worked, worked hard, worked real, way better. Just never was the top. He and Flair had the best break matches. Although I think Barry Windham and Flair was better. Ah, Barry Barry Windham was a fucking cunt. Bullshit. Barry Windham was the best worker in the business from about. Who took the best atomic drops of wrestling history? Ooh, who took there the is best one way. answer, and if you don't get it, you're wrong. Oh, God. Mm. Fuck. I don't know who. In the WWF? In wrestling. Well, but was it in the WWF? He was in the WWF. <sighs> but, I mean, it? his best work wasn't done in the WWF. Well, nobody's was, ever. I Except it might have been. His might have been. Well, some of these guys who were ever only there, like the Ultimate Warrior, his best shit was there, but it was not good at all. <laughs> his um, best shit was after he died. Yeah. He sucked. He was awful. He was he was the example. He was worse than fucking Vader. Are you shitting me? Vader was a million times better than him. Vader? Vader so, was fucking good. So when I said he was worse than Vader, I was wrong why are you arguing no you're right but you shouldn't even be comparing those two i mean vader was fucking 400 and something pounds doing moonsaults i mean vader was vader did a lot of impressive shit but he fucked up a lot he his his whole gimmick was he beat the fuck out of you for real right for working the way. problem is your job is not to hurt your fucking dance partner well you he didn't... break your toys you have nothing to play with that's I wish said, Vader would have fucking walked in a lot locker room for the first time and ran into Andre, not Brody. Or Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff knocked him out in flip-flops. On Paul, one side of the story. Paul Orndorff whipped his ass. I've heard the other side of the story, too. And Paul, neither of us were there. There's no point in arguing. Paul Orndorff was a bad motherfucker. Maybe bad he ass. was. Maybe he wasn't. So he who was. took the best atomic drops? Who Fuck. took the best? Who sold the atomic drop the best? God damn it. Oh, uh, Roddy Piper. Rick Rude. Rick Rude? I guarantee when you think of Rick Rude taking an uh, atomic drop, you can see those tights tighten it up and his heart back arching, walking around the ring. Like, oh, <laughs> motherfucker, that hurts. I hey, guarantee you can picture it right now. Rick Rude was a badass for real. For real, he beat Thank Ultimate. You. He beat Ultimate Warrior's ass in the in the locker room, which is not a real accomplishment, but he still okay. nobody Did you hear wants- the story about the uh young lad that was like, Okay, well, that guy was not a good wrestler if you were able to do that. And he showed everybody in front of the entire locker room how easily he could fucking whoop Rick's ass in real wrestling. Multiple times. Who? Who? I can't remember the guy's fucking name. It was late 80s WWF. I'll have to I'll have to look it up, but he uh, said he said he could whoop Rick Rude's ass. Well, it might have been WCW because Sting was the one that eventually told him, like, hey man, that's enough. And I've heard both Sting's recount and that guy's. Have you heard the story about Sting getting a fucking his head stuck in the toilet and a swirly from Dick Slater? Yes. Dick Slater was no fucking joke. Bit of a bitch. Not, you did not want to fuck with Dick Slater. Man, there was a lot of dudes you didn't want to fuck with. Dick Murdoch was tough, too. Yeah, I mean, look, if the guy's name is Dick, he's probably been in a few fights, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah. fuck, would you rather fight a guy named Dick or Sue? <laughs> Either way, they fucking had to deal with it for a long time. They had to get tough or die. Uh, I'm <laughs> pretty sure you just crossed copyright problems, but whatever. Um, I mean, Adrian. Adonis? What name's their son, Adrian? Yeah. 
Apparently, uh, he was a legitimate badass until he tried to show he was a badass the wrong night. I guess Danny Spivey. Spivey, is that how you say it? It's not Spivey. Danny Spivey. Danny Spivey knocked him out backstage, yeah. Busted him open, like, real yeah. bad. Well, he, he, he fucking crushed him, like, one time. And then when Adonis came to, he come up and wanted some more, and then he got crushed again. So that's not good. I well, mean, he like, started in the ring, and when they got back, he tried to go again in the locker room and got real lit up. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not but, Danny. I, Danny Spivey sucks. He was the shits. He was not like, a good wrestler, no. but apparently legitimately one of the baddest motherfuckers well, in the locker room. Well, I mean, he was six foot seven and 300-something seven, yeah. pounds. I mean, he's a big fucking dude. And a giant yeah. lefty. Yeah. I mean, he he wasn't... I mean, he was a tough guy, but he was not, you know, the tough guy. Um, so, have you ever, who's the one that sucker punched Andre at the restaurant? Black Jack Mulligan. Who was considered one of the toughest dudes in the locker room, yeah? Jim Mulligan was a fucking six foot nine and a big fucking tough guy, yeah. yeah. And then he got fucked up. Well, he, he, he had a really bad temper, apparently, according to what all the stories I've heard. Are there any excuses? No, I'm not making excuses, but I mean anybody who will anybody who will take a legitimate fucking cut and Andre the Giant has got to be either crazy or somewhere in the neighborhood of thinking he can pull it off. And which one was it? I think it was a little bit of both. Um but, man, you don't get that tough without being a little crazy. Right. But, That's right. So the story I heard most often out of the recounts was Mulligan fucking threw the sucker punch while he was sitting down. And then Andre whooped him and his buddy's ass. I heard the story that, that like, Andre was sitting like on the edge. They were in a hotel room and Andre was like sitting on the bed or something. And then like Mulligan the hit him and like knocked him and he got like kind of stuck between the, like the in wall the, and the bed. And he, it was I hard heard he was get in it. the bar. And Andre was sitting at the table. I haven't heard that one. And when he got hit, that was the end of it. But Blackjack Mulligan was legit. Like, I mean, not from Andre the Giant, but, like, he was one of those guys in his day that you did not fuck with. I mean, Why was Andre afraid of fucking bad news? He wasn't. So he why wasn't. wouldn't he get off the bus that day? Because he knew he was wrong. So he didn't want to go beat up the little... whatever he said. Yeah. He knew he was in the wrong, and he, yeah. I mean, if you know, if you if you have a moment where you know, oh, I've been drinking, and I'm drunk, and I said something I shouldn't have, and somebody got mad, he didn't like. He would have felt worse if he went out there and beat his ass, right? He knew he was wrong. That happens. Now, I'm not saying. Look, bad news, bad news, Brown or Allen or whatever you want to call him, Allen Coge or Coage or however you say his name. Yeah, yeah. He, he was fucking for real. Like, yeah, yeah, he was on the Olympic judo team. Yes, he, he was like, a judo. He would fucking stretch somebody's ass. Like a fucking seven footer. They can't keep their hips real low. They're going to go for a ride. <laughs> right, right. So was Andre afraid of him? No, I don't think he was scared of shit. So why did he not go out? Because he well, knew he was I've wrong. seen some of the shoot works of Andre and. Uh, I'm a giant, giant Andre the Giant fan. No, like no pun intended. Just huge fan of the Giant. Um, I don't know if I can put much behind a lot of the stories I've heard because of the film I've seen. What stories specifically about Andre, or what? Like most of them, um, the Big John Stud, the Bam Bam Bigelow, the how he fucked these dudes up real bad, 
and then you see some of these shoot works from Japan or what he was trying to get his well, boxers. You, well, you have to understand Andre had he had several probably his last ten years or so in the business, his body was already breaking down so bad. Yeah, yeah, by the time I was alive, he was yeah. well past. I get yes, it. Yes, but there's like in the early seventies, he was like three hundred and sixty pounds and like six foot nine or whatever. He was like right, where rocks. he's doing the three on one matches and he would but get he, all three guys in the leg scissors and pick them all up and slam them down. And he was I, throwing I, at that size, he was doing drop kicks, and they look good. They look good, hey, right? I mean, he just, was. As you got older, these guys are still saying, "This is the shit he would do." And I watched the match, and I'm like, it doesn't look like he was kicking the fuck out of somebody for real, right? When they say he kicked Bam Bam Bigelow around the fucking ring like he was a soccer ball. I don't see it. I think there was a time at least where there was some legitimate heat between him and Big John Studd, and I think he... Yeah, no, and Savage and Bigelow, there was a lot of t guys that he just did not like. They run the wrong way for whatever he did, reason. He did not like Jake Roberts at all, which who would? He's a fucking piece of dog shit. But, yeah. You take that did. back right now. Jake Roberts was... Take that back fucking... right now. Jake Roberts is a take it back right now. Turd. He sucks. You're a piece of shit. Jake Roberts is a piece of fucking Best shit. Best wrestler ever. Oh God, please. Yes. He, the only thing he could do is talk. His work in the ring wasn't that good. He looked like a fucking drywaller. He was six foot six and had a beer gut. So looking like a drywaller was what made him so good. He was awful. He was awful. You are wrong. He was never good. All yeah. he could do was talk. His work in the ring was not good. He was a fucking coked up, pilled up, heroined up. I will head. not blame him for any of that. <laughs> he sucked. He was awful. Terrible. Name a guy that was better at powder. <laughs> Jake Roberts. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, Name a dude. Iron Sheik. That could Iron work. Sheik. Iron Sheik sucked. Iron Sheik was better at powder. Iron Sh not even fucking close. Not what do you even mean by, close. What do you mean by powder? You talking about up the nose or what? Not snorting cocaine. I meant powdering. When you fucking hop out of the ring. Oh, so when you, oh, oh, okay. When you take a, take a fucking timeout. Powdering, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Holy fuck! I'm trying to argue with a fucking noob that doesn't even know the terminology. You. Well, fuck. I didn't know. I didn't know what you. Oh were man, saying. this is what happens when you talk to these Southern Americans. They're you know all who, fucking you, dumb. You know who was better at powdering? Ric Flair. Ric Flair. Yeah, I, I was worried about you going with that one. Ric Flair was. There was one time that Ric Flair pulled off the best powder. Of all time. <laughs> and he won the goddamn Royal Rumble. Yep. Yep. Outside of that, in a regular day-to-day -day match scenario, Jake Roberts was better at working the crowd and knew when to do what better than anybody else. He, he did have great psychology, and he had a great promo. Better than everybody else. You don't have to like him, but he was better than everybody else. There has never been a man before or after better at it than Jake. I just never and got We're him. not talking about the fat, coked up, drunk guy that showed up and refused to even give a DDG. We're not talking about that guy. We're talking about the guy in his prime. Well, the thing is, is his prime was before he got to the WWF. Like oh everybody's fucking Christ. It was. It was. No, it wasn't. It, yeah, in mid south, no, in in mid south, and in late eighties in, in the WWF that run with fucking rude. That was his prime, 
and the matches were phenomenal. He knew that was a heel heel work. Phenomenal. You had two guys fighting over who was the bigger bad guy. And oh, Jake nope. got over as a fucking face by being a better bad guy. Oh, he's the ultimate bad guy in real life, except maybe for his fucking dad. Jesus Christ. Chris Benoit. He's worse than him. I mean, that was a mercy killing Chris Benoit did. <laughs> Roy, you might have to go on another two-week timeout. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, Dude, you cannot fucking tell me that there was another wrestler better at selling the story than Jake was. Like, I'm not, it, not picking he had, it up. No. He had great, he had great psychology. Right. But, but Sold it better than anyone, which is really your fucking job. I mean, he making the best. There is something to be said for making people believe, which is what wrestling used to be about. Was like you make people right. believe it. Now right. it's all so. Shot. I mean, yeah, yeah. there is two different eras, kayfabe and not. Yeah, and and he was the best of his. You know what? I'll give you also, that. Also, you know what else you really have to give him? What? He made Stone Cold. No, he fucking didn't. Okay, no. so Stone Cold made himself based on what Jake gave him. Oh, Stone Cold would have made it without Jake. There was Robert no 316 and there was no bottom line without Jake. Oh, it no. didn't happen. No, there's you a whole argue those, those are facts. There's a YouTube video of people there, talking you can't about argue with me, those are facts. No, yes, I can. They're not. Okay, no. what's your argument? I will send you a link to a YouTube video that is my argument where they laugh, and at I Jake. will send you links to both Jake's testimony and Steve's <laughs> testimony that. That ever uh, link you're sending me a shit. Other, uh, but for Jake I will the make snake. a video right goddamn now explaining why your fan is not actually working. It's a prop that is actually just a microphone for you to send all information on my channel straight to the government because you're a fucking Russian spy. I will make that video and send you the link right now. Does that prove it's real? No, I'm you're fucking stupid. I'm not Artem Taranenko. Not a Russian spy. But you met him. I have. Right. So how do I know you're not the same person? Maybe I've been infiltrated. Right. Look, I'm just saying, you see a fucking online video. Oh, my God, it must be cracked. But I've seen both of those guys say the same fucking story. So whatever video you saw is probably better. No, it's actually right, but still, whatever. There right. would have been a there would have been a Stone Cold Steve Austin if Jake uh, Roberts would have been. I'm shot not saying Edward. Stone Cold wouldn't have ever made it up, but he made it for real that fucking day, an Austin three sixteen, and that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Both came from that fucking night, <laughs> right? So. Look, if Austin wouldn't have gotten his fucking mouth busted over and had to go for stitches and rush back and only got rushed in, hey, he said this, okay, I gotta go with that. Okay, there's lots of shit that could have happened. It all worked out real good, but without Jake, it wouldn't have happened. Not that way. Okay. Also, Jake was shit by then. Yeah. He was so fucking fat. Yeah. You might as well have been doing the high school shows where he refused to fucking do a DDT. But or Jake the autog- Roberts or the autog- shit worked 
the ring, work the crowd. Best wrestler ever. You're entitled to your opinion, however wrong it may be. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm explaining why I'm right. Yeah. Ric Flair, really? Jake Roberts couldn't lace up Ric Flair's fucking boots. Could not. Right, because he was busy fucking working on being good. Uh While Rick was working on showing airline attendants his fucking wiener. Yeah. If you had grown up watching NWA wrestling in about the time you were My bad for growing up fucking not poor. You're bad for growing up where you only saw WWF. You fucking grew up poor as fuck and the only thing you could see was Ric Flair wrestling Junkyard Dog and Harley Race. Not Junkyard Dog. Who was a pussy, by the way. Harley Race, yes. Junkyard Dog, no. Both. I mean, he did wrestle Junkyard Dog after Junkyard Dog left the WWF and came back to WCW. Roy, I have no... No confidence in your ability as a man. <laughs> and I think you would have beaten Harley Race in a fight. Oh, god damn it. Beer man, you're you've just fucking gone off the rails. You're you're just trolling now. Yeah, that was a real, that was that was tough to say. Harley Race. Andre the Giant was scared of Harley Race. He was. Yeah. Harley Race was a I know there's a whole famous quote. Andre the Giant was afraid of two people, Harley Race and Haku. Harley Race was only afraid of one. His wife. Haku. I like the Jake Roberts fucking thing about uh, if I was in a tank with a gun. Yeah. And Haku was 100 yards away. <laughs> like 500. You'd think it's an easy fight, wouldn't you? Nope, I would shoot myself with that gun because the last thing I want to do is injure that motherfucker and have him really mad. Yeah. I, that That's a great quote. Facetious as fuck, right? Like, But he's being serious in a way. He's like, I, in no way, shape, or form do I ever want to fuck with this guy. Ever. I'm still gonna fire the fucking tank at him first. <laughs> you know, oops, I missed. Okay, now I got the gun. But you, again, there's there are certain people in the world that come up and they have either they develop it through training and practice, but they probably always kind of had it to start with. But there are people that can turn into like wild animals that are. Like, they can go to a place where they become... Yeah, like well, a... I got to interrupt you because I can't pay attention to what you're saying. I'm still mad that you hate Jake so much. You I don't hate him. Was like, dude, so he had a terrible childhood. He grew up, and all he wanted to do is prove his father wrong. He became a referee because he couldn't wrestle. And he broke into the business the hard way, the long road. And turned out to be one of the very best who have ever done. Okay, he became a fucking crackhead. And he fucked up a lot. He fucked fucked over a lot of people bad. A lot of people in the business. Name one wrestler that made it that didn't. Not, no, not like that. Oh, 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 we're stuttering now. No, not like that. We're not talking about now, we're talking about the 80s. Everybody was out for themselves, and they had to be, or you wouldn't make it. So I, I reject your argument on the premise of it. No. He he became, they put the belt on him. When Jim Cornette was running Smoky Mountain Wrestling, Jim Cornette brought him in, put the fucking belt on him. Yeah, you can't champion. fucking and blame Jake for anything Jim Cornette has done. Jim Cornette put the belt on him and was like, okay, we're going to have a run with you. You're going to be the champ. He came in, put the belt on him. He showed up one week, and then after that, he fucking just disappeared into fucking a crack house. Well, just, so did Austin. He took his ball and went home. I mean, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, Ultimate Warrior. There's a thousand guys that have fucking said, I'm taking my ball and going home. Not, 
that way. They did. They they put. They dropped it on the way out. They they did the right thing for business. They didn't just fucking disappear and no show. One drill he's, screw job. Vince McMahon not, having to pay an extra hundred thousand dollars, and then firing people, lots of times. Montreal yeah. double cross. No, it was a double cross, not a screw job. That's different. They call it the screw job, but it's really a double cross. It was really a double cross. It really was. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. It wasn't. And I, let me tell you another thing. I think it was probably because I was kind of over. I never really watched WWF wrestling, but by the time it got to where I could watch it before YouTube and anything like, I mean, like when I was young, I was already a little bit older when I first started to be able to see any of it. Dude, you were fucking 47 when the internet came out. What the fuck? I, I never got Bret Hart. I never thought Bret Hart was that fucking good. Never. Well, he was. Better than Rick. No. no. Yes, absolutely. No. For sure. Absolutely. No. More, okay. more, I will give you, he was more of a, he was a better mat wrestler. He was better. He was a better a, worker. No, no. Yeah, he would take the bumps. He would sell the show. He would take the wins or the losses and sell it better. He was better than Ric Flair. Absolutely. Oh, you think he sold better than Ric Flair? Yes. No. No. Unequivocally. No. Dude, it's oh. not close. Oh. Ric Flair oversold so hard every time for everybody. It's just not the same thing. No. I know, you like Bret, I know you like Bret because Hart. Turning, no, I don't like Bret Hart. He's just he's from, Rick. Because he's from Canada. No, I don't like Bret Hart. I just didn't get it. I, didn't I will really, fucking I mean, I'm not saying he's... I'm not saying he's over Bret Hart every day. You'll take who over Bret Hart? Dynamite Kid. As a worker, yes, I would too. Over Ric Flair too? No. Well, I take Bret Hart over Ric Flair, so the pro- yeah. The problem Dude, is... You go the- watch fucking Dynamite Kid and fucking El Tigre in Japan. Tiger Mask. Tiger Mask. It's not close. But they were cruiserweights. That's the difference. I mean, I agree. They were phenomenal. Better wrestling, better selling, everything. Dynamite Ric Flair, not that good. But Dynamite Kid could never he could have never been the WWF heavyweight champion. He was too small. He was five foot eight and fucking Because bottom. fucking Vince McMahon has this thing about naming dildos after wrestlers and he would never allow a guy that small. Did he ever shit on Dynamite Kid's head? Is what I want to know. Uh, there's a reason he was there for ten years. <laughs> I love the story of fucking was it Jacques? Didn't fire him over the Rougeau incident. Yeah, which Rougeau knocked his teeth out with a roll of quarters? Was it Jacques or Raymond? Raymond. Raymond fucking Raymond. hammered him. Jacques. Oh, hold on. You got to see that. It was Jacques. It was Jacques. It was. Raymond. I get confused because uh, they were both giant pussies. No, they weren't. No, they were no. no, no. I, res- I respect him for staying. Did you read the he- goddamn Super Chat, Roy? Yes. Because it's all blurry to me. UDD for five euro. The only real badass wrestler named Jake has the surname Ward and would whoop Beer Man's ass in and out of the ring. Ooh! So he's saying... I regret what? asking you to read that. I gotta pass... Um, I'm gonna keep talking. Uh, we don't want to see your ass! That's not good. That's a hammer and a nail on your ass. That's really gross, Beer Man. Yeah, we don't yeah. Need- no, I don't want to talk about it. That's you got that tattoo after your first night hanging out with the trannies in a fucking coke house, and they hammered your asshole. That's what it was. No, actually, it was a good buddy of mine, and uh, apparently, he hammered my ass and didn't put Vaseline on until he was done. There you go. So what this guy is saying is that Aussie arm wrestler would stretch you in the fucking wrestling ring, which is probably true. Well, not now with his bad hips and knees and shit and whatever. He ran like 7,000 miles across Australia. You know that, right? I want to fuck up Jake Ward so bad right now. (laughs) Oh, I hope he clips that. We need a clip on Aussie Arm Wrestler show. Beerman says he wants to fuck me up. 
Yeah, Jake Ward's a motherfucker. Don't tell me that pro wrestler. He was a he, he was a pro wrestler. I mean, it was in Australia, so that's kind of like being the smartest kid in the fucking special ed class. Is that Dude. really pro if you still can't pay? If you can't make your living off it, you're not a pro. Well, you could say that about 90% of the arm wrestlers. Well, that's a generous stat. <laughs> 95? <laughs> There's like four arm wrestlers in Northern America that make a living off arm wrestling. Okay, who are they? Devin, Devin, Michael Todd. Uh, hmm. Who else? Michael Todd doesn't have a regular job because he's got all these fucking sponsors and stuff. Um, so who are the four? Devin, Michael Todd. It's got to be two more in North America. I'm gonna say Uncle John and the Beer Man. <laughs> Laugh if you will. Yeah. I didn't say they're the four best arm wrestlers in North America, but those are the ones that make their living on arm wrestling. Uncle John does other work. He does like voiceover stuff and stuff, right? I don't. Well, you don't, but you also are the beer man. So yeah. that's different. You I mean, exist you exist in your own plane of reality, beer man. Nobody else is in the same world. It know. is literally my living. Right. I mean, which is which is really what makes you so great. Because I God. am the beer man. Right. Right. That's exact. Really. So I, mean, I am the Jake Roberts of arm wrestling. Oh. The greatest of all time. <laughs> now, I might not have ever won that world title. Because you're not reliable. Fucker, I'm the best that's ever done it. You're not you're, you're not going to get the belt put on you because they know they can't depend on you and you're not reliable. Or you're when have up. I ever not showed up? Well, I don't One know. One time, and it's not my fault. They made up a fake disease to stop me from whooping schoolboy's ass. You know, I so wish that match could have happened then. <sighs> you know what? My life would be so different right now if it would have happened. You've had a lot of moments like that in your life. Really? Right? Like my entire time. life, yeah. We've talked about your whole fighting record and how many scheduled fights you had. And you yeah, all that. I mean, that's different. Um, yeah, but it's still one of those things where... Yeah, yeah, but that's previous to arm wrestling. This one, very specifically, because of a made-up fucking bullshit, um, I actually trained really fucking hard. And I have never been willing to put that kind of effort into something that might happen ever again. Well, it was, I mean, it wasn't might. It was supposed to happen. I mean, other than this fucking bullshit, it would happen. Right. It, and that's when I realized I wasted all of that effort. Not really, because you got better. I mean, like it was. Um, yeah, but it goes away. It doesn't stay forever. All of that work is temporary. It's a build to a peak. And then you come down. And if you don't do all of that work still, you, you lose it. Right. I am I don't not think you as good as I was while training for that goddamn match. And I will never train that fucking hard again. Without a real good goddamn reason. Well, that was a real good goddamn It was. Answer. It was a fucking phenomenal opportunity, a once in a lifetime thing for me. Was right? it wasn't wasn't that gonna be East versus West? Yeah, I was the only match ahead of me. I was the co main event. The only match ahead of me was fucking John blah blah blah. Right? Like too. I'm looking at I don't even care. I paid attention to one match on that card. And I look back at it. And I may have gotten other major opportunities afterwards because of it. Yeah. And especially if you be, especially if you fucking beat him. Dude, dude. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna beat him everywhere. Was it right hand? Yeah. I 
I know anybody could say whatever the fuck they want afterwards, but dude, that pretty well killed my career. Nah. Training that fucking hard and not getting to go. I have never really put effort into training. So I started lifting to make up for the lack of intense training that I would normally do, right? So I, I kept all of the intense training and lifted. And I got absolutely to the peak that I have ever seen, for sure, easily. And not by a little, by a lot. And since then, like, I don't want to put that much time, effort, and focus into a match knowing that it might not happen for any goddamn reason. But that's, you got to change your mind, man. You got to change your mind about that. Because you, you got to embrace the fucking. That experience. match is the worst thing that ever happened to me, dude. No, no matter but what. It was the best opportunity I've ever had in my life. You know, to change how the future of my life goes. It was. And I capitalized. I fucking worked hard. And then when it didn't happen, why would you ever work that hard for something that doesn't happen? Because you can't. So here's, anyway. here's what really changed, though, Roy. I love arm wrestling. Always have. And I arm wrestled all the time, as hard as I could. My training camps were always table only, never weights. I just loved arm wrestling. It was like literally a solid arm wrestling camp for 10 fucking years, right? I only rested for events. Everything else was just training to get better and working hard, hard, hard. And then I added in lifting which was no longer fun. Well, it now became work. It's not really fun for anybody. Right. But I, mean, I enjoyed think... arm wrestling and I enjoyed the training of arm wrestling. And then now I got to do this lifting bullshit that I do not like. And I got to dedicate hours of my life to something I don't enjoy. And I got to a peak and I never got to show it. And now I don't even enjoy putting that work in. Like it just leaves a sour taste. It now I go to practice and I do it because I have to, not because I just love it and want to. Well, I mean, you know what I mean, like I... when you put that much effort in, and then you and everything was going well, I'm still on an upward. And then I get offered this opportunity and everybody thinks like, oh, man, you know what? It's a good match. School was probably a little ahead. And that drove me to the tits. That's it. This is the time we start adding in working out outside of arm wrestling. And I did it. And I hated it. And well, then it got to the point where I didn't hate all the lifting and then it didn't happen and it's like I spent all that fucking time I understand what you're saying and I sympathize with you however you have a completely different mindset than for example like Devin if Devin would have done this Devin's always done the same thing he's always worked his ass off and if he has a match that gets canceled, he just goes on to the next one. He doesn't give a fuck. Because he just right. loves I it. don't get a next one like that. You could have. You still could. You still See, could. Yeah. Let's put in that same volume of fucking work for four straight years, hoping to get another one. You you just gotta have a good win. So you gotta beat Tim Breslin. Yeah. <laughs> So, if I work as hard as I can for six straight months, I could get to a higher peak than I was for Schoolboy. 
Okay, do it. And they get my ass whooped by a Tim president that just got off the goddamn couch. Schoolboy was not that fucking level. Not close. No, not me. There is levels to this shit, and I sell my shit. I I, I like yeah. to fight. I don't ever want to train that hard again without a good goddamn reason. Now, I showed up real strong for Paul. Real strong. I just didn't have the cardio. Like, Well, you also, he top rolled you and you got stuck in that fucking break arm position right off the bat. Right. Well, not shoulder. right off the bat. I actually had his hand first. Right. Paul's a hell of a top roller. He is. Paul's a, oh, it's hard to say things good about him, but he is <laughs> a really good arm wrestler. Yeah. It, he's a real, yeah. I did not want to top roll with Paul. I wanted to hook him. I got into that setup and realized I will lose my hand immediately if I hook. Like I'm not gonna get him in. Um his setup was very unique. I I didn't believe I would get hook. So I top rolled. I got his hand first. And then he got it back. And then I'm hanging out on my goddamn elbow, hoping he gets tired. Right? Like, the only other option I had was to give up. And that's not a real option. I will fight forever. I still love the fight. I just don't yeah. love the training like I used to. That schoolboy thing really put a sour taste in my mouth about training that hard. When I was in Cuba and I had nothing else to do, I went to the gym three times a day and the buffet four times a day because that was <laughs> all there was to do. It is not fun to sit at a goddamn pool. No. How anybody wants to go to a goddamn resort so that they can lay in the sun beside a pool. No. It, out of your goddamn mind, that is not fun. I don't give a shit about tropical islands and hot. It's fucking hot here. I want to go to a mountain with fucking snow on it. Fuck the beach. Fuck the fucking hot weather. Fuck all that shit. Man, I don't want to go to a mountain full of snow either. I do. I hang out with my family and friends and enjoy my goddamn life. I'd rather be on the snow. I'm my fucking eyes closed. Oh, just enjoy the sun. It's fucking stupid. I'm accomplishing yeah. nothing. Sweating well, your I, ass off, getting sunburned. I did work out and eat. If I would have stayed in Cuba, <laughs> if you for stayed three Cuba, fucking months, because I bar. just didn't enjoy doing anything else while I was there. I don't want to go to the ocean. I don't want to fucking lay at the fucking pool. I would have either drank my fucking self to death or become stronger than ever. Because boredom. You, if you stayed there for four months, you'd have beat Levon. Um, no, I had no access to steroids there. And communist Cuba does not fucking, they're not so lenient on this. Really? Except, except for their Olympic team? Right. And I'm not Cuban. You can pass for it. How do you get it? How do you find it? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm Yoel Romero. Give me my shit. Like, <laughs> Yoel Romero. <laughs> right. How do you convince somebody? Give me it. Is he still know, fighting? He can find it. What about Hector Lombard? Remember Hector Lombard? Yeah, he was a bit of a piece of shit. I loved when fucking uh, Dan Henderson whooped his ass. Remember that? Dan yeah. Henderson fucked Dan Henderson picked him up and fucking spiked him on his head. Like, remember whenever Cormier fought Henderson? No. Oh, he picked him up on one side. Yes. And then he fucking turned him up the other side. Yes. He fuck, he picked him up and really turned him over. That was brutal. I Cormier's was a, Cormier's so a upset. I'm like, bad. you don't need to do that to that guy. I know. I know. It kind of hurt my heart, too, seeing Dan Henderson getting fucking thrown on his head like that. It was brutal. But I'll, look, Dan Henderson is one of the, my favorite MMA fighters ever. He was a bad motherfucker. Who? Dan Henderson. 
Nice. I love him. Shit, he'd beat your ass right now. He's 50 something. He was tough. He beat Big Nog. You know, he beat Big Nog in a pride fight, right? When he was 185 pounds and Big Nog was 240, right? He that beat. That is incorrect. He beat Big Nog. He did. Incorrect. He, yes, he did. Oh, he, he beat Big a, Dog, but not at 185 pounds. Well, he, how big was, was it? Was it an open weight tournament? Could he cut to 185? Yes. Was he over 200? Absolutely. Did he beat Big Nog? Yes, he did. That's not the only impressive name that he beat in that uh, tournament that night. But he was not him, 185 pounds. Well, whatever he was, he was, you know, it, even him, like, just saying, fuck it, I'm going to be as big as I can, he's still not going to be much over 200. It was he's a not, fight. He's not a big guy. Dan Henderson's not a big dude. He's big five dude. foot. He's not nowhere near as big as me. Oh, he absolutely is. I'm six foot two, 265 fucking pounds. You think he's bigger than me? You're fat no. as fuck. <laughs> Whatever. I don't give a fuck. I'm bigger than you him. You outweigh him. You're not bigger than him. I'm way bigger. He's five foot ten and 100. Motherfucker. I was nose to nose with Ron Bath. About how mad he was for the tag match. <laughs> I outweigh Ron Bath by 40 fucking pounds. He is bigger than me. I'm not as fat as you think I am. I met you in person. You are a fat fucking piece of shit. <laughs> no, also, there is not one thing about your pudgy ass that makes me think you've got any bit of strength. Whatever, dude. Like I I have given it up. You are good at shooting and you know your guns and bullets. <laughs> you are probably good at a very specific video game that came from the 70s. <laughs> right? I mean, you can't do a sit-up. I do incline sit-ups no, all you the don't. time. Yes, I do. You don't do sit-ups. Yes, I do. And the only sit-up you do is when you kick your legs over the side of the bed in the morning. Fuck right off. I'm probably in actually better shape than you overall. Really. I, probably I mean, am. if you're looking for how round you could be. I could out-fucking lift you, out-fucking walk you, out- I will lift you up and turn you upside down and spike you on your fucking head. No, you would you might think so, but you never would. Roy. Look, Roy. I, don't know if you, I don't know if you understand this, beer man, but I've been doing Tai Chi for 20 years. So I'm ahead of you. All right. I know you think you're really tough and all this boxing and MMA and wrestling bullshit, but I'm talking about Tai Chi, beer man. You just don't, you just don't understand. Look, I understand. <laughs> How ridiculous what you're saying is and that you're doing it intentionally. <laughs> and it's still aggravating me. <laughs> like, you I know mean, you did a good job when I'm getting pissed off knowing that all you're saying is shit trying to piss me off. It's not. You think it is, and I laugh because you think it is, but in, I actually know it's really not. But that's... Roy... You said Tai Chi. Yeah. You said Tai Chi. There is no goddamn... Roy, I know you're from the South, but you're not fucking retarded. You got a touch of autism, but you're not fucking retarded. You do not believe that Tai Chi is a real goddamn thing. Tai Chi is not just a real thing. It is the real ultimate martial art of all. It is. If you run into somebody who actually knows Tai Chi that's been doing it for... Listen, my fucking Tai Chi teacher is... You are literally trying to become Steven Seagal. No. No, no, no. No, I'm not. My Tai Chi teacher is 75 years old. He's 5 foot 8, and he weighs 170 pounds. You're he, telling me that a 170-year-old man... He would murder you. He yeah, would yeah, yeah. murder anybody me. that says this hundred and seventy year old man's gonna beat my ass. I'm not listening to. No, he's seventy five, and he's yeah, not listening. He will 
He no, would like, fucking murder boy, you. Murder boy. you. Those 10.2s are not doing you good. Look, I know I'm drunk. He would murder you. If you're so, talking 10.2%, you've had like, what, two beers? You're fucked up. If you're saying some 75-year-old man is going to murder me because he knows Tai Chi. Well, that's not all he knows, but he knows that. But he would murder you, like, bad. Like, he wouldn't fight you. He would kill you. Kill you if you fucked with him. Like, seriously. But he, he could be nice. I mean, he could be nice and not kill you. But if he wanted to, he would. Roy, you're it's literally not, pushing the boundaries. Of my it's time. not even close. It's not. Even, I know you live in this world of all this shit. Roy, totally I will concede I would not win a fight against you if we started from 500 yards. <laughs> I ain't talking about but me But if now. we started within arm's reach of each other and there was rules that you're not allowed to have a gun, you're fucked. Maybe. And so is Tai Chi old man fucking Hong. Oh, God. Not he, close. Dude. Jesus Christ. He would stick your head up your ass so bad. Like, you would never even know what happened. It would be so brutal. It would be three seconds. I actually know how to wrestle, which really fucking eliminates all of these fucking Eastern fucking martial arts completely. I'm a hundred pounds bigger than him. I would love to And his fucking background is Thai fucking chi. That's not all it is, but that's all he needs. You would, I would love to see you try to take him down. And I understand. You are just trying to fucking rile me up and you're would, doing a good goddamn job and i know that is all you're doing no there i'm serious no way you actually believe what you're saying and I it's absolutely still did. working on me so i gotta say i am definitely fucking drunk otherwise there's no way i'd buy into this fucking I, i'm not bullshit. actually joking i would love to see you, you try know to you're not joking you are flat out fucking lying try it is not it close you do yeah. not know a 170 pound man that he is would, 75 years oh, old. He would kill you. He would kill you so bad. Can't do it. He All would right, guys. It. Look, you need to oh. understand, it is Roy's fault. I wanted to get after it tonight. Roy fucked it all. Um, I'm going to say things that are definitely illegal. Can't do it. Have a good he, would, he would gouge your eyes out and skull fuck yeah. you. Yeah. I can set it up. Okay. Set, set it up. up.